everybody, welcome to back. Here's some Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Technically, this is the 500th episode, give or take. Uh, I'm excited because we've done 500 episodes of the show. I actually thought about doing some math and being like, so if you average like an hour an episode, how many hours, it's 500 hours, like how many days is that? How so, much time have we stolen from you? How much time have I stolen from you? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, way more than an hour per episode, that's certainly. for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there's some episodes that were like three or more. There's those live streams that were like 20 hours or longer. So yeah, we're doing 52. Uh, people have been asking for this forever. So much so that like I didn't buy this. Some fan sent this to me like years ago. Do it. And then, I remember. You know, that was when we were still filming in the little house. Seriously, yeah, yeah. We were shooting at the house. So thank you very much, intrepid fan who sent this to us. We really appreciate it, even though I don't remember who it was. This is... Great. Oh. I love 52, and it might be the best thing that DC's ever made. What? Yeah. Okay. You Especially mean the best, like, event? It's easily or? the best event that DC's ever pulled off. Wow. And it's funny. That's how, how could that be? Because it's, because it's really good. I get, yeah, there's, just, there's four people working on this. Yeah. Four people. So, okay. The idea is Infinite Crisis has happened, and they've gone through a crazy, tumultuous uh, event, a crisis, if you will. Uh, they're in a new fertile place. Uh, the world hasn't been rebooted or anything, but mm -hmm. you know we're still in a new kind of era for DC. But not a new 52. No, not yet. <laughs> not for another couple of years. But they're all aware that they're in a new era. They're like, everything's different now. Yes, the right. world has changed. <laughs> okay. And so- Thanks Galadriel. We needed to uh, <laughs> come up with a new idea. And so what they did was they launched this thing called One Year Later where after Infinite Crisis, all the books, Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman, etc., uh, had this moniker on them, one year later. And so they told stories a year later, like after Infinite Crisis. So like mm -hmm. Infinite Crisis ends, and then we see where Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and the rest of the DC Universe is a year after. Oh, how did things shift so drastically? We'll tell you later. Like, we'll tell you what happens in that year later. And that was when they were cooking up 52, which was a weekly series one issue at a time, one week apart for 52 weeks. And each issue represented one week in the missing year of the DC continuity. And so while everyone else was working on all those things, they got a bunch of creators together to work on the 52. And those creators are Jeff Johns, Grant Morrison, Greg Rucka, and Mark Wade. And I'm like, oh my God, I could not put together a better roster of writers to work together to set up what was already set up in the DC universe. And that's the thing, one year later, no one talks about one year later. Who gives a crap? Exactly, but I also imagine it's weird because you're like, oh, one year later, how'd we get here? Yeah. Let's spend a year of let's go back, let's go <laughs> that's back. That's right, it's a year of flashbacks so and it, retcons. Is it really just 52 let's go back? Yes, let's go back, let's check it out. So we do, and the whole point of it is Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman are off the table. Batman leaves and goes on a pilgrimage with a couple of Robins to try and like get over the fact that he is an untrusting douche. Uh, <laughs> Superman was depowered during a battle with uh, Superboy Prime, etc. And so he's around, but not able to be Superman. Uh, and Wonder Woman, nobody wants to write for her, so whatever. <laughs> And she's over there. And unfortunately then after this, like she's set up and they're like, I, I, I don't know. And then she gets one of the worst runs of her entire career. So, you know, Wonder Woman has done dirty like she has been pretty much since she was created. <laughs> but, you know, conceptually, Wonder Woman's off the table. So 52 is this massive undertaking that is also kind of like an afterthought. They're like, this book has to come out literally once a week for a year, give it to four people who have done this and know what to do and how to do it, uh, but have also not really worked in groups before. They all bring on their A-game because all of them love DC and or have had a significant impact on the brand, the universe, and the publishing line. And, and they're all too delighted by the premise, which is use the second stringers. Mm. The main trinity is gone. What happens while they're away? This. <laughs> in an effort to keep things coordinated, they bring in Keith Giffen, who does all the breakdowns for the entire series. Keith Giffen like draws out what each issue is going to look like from the directives of the writers. And then different artists come in and do the finishes, but 
they don't have to figure out all the panel compositions and all the directions. Mm. Keith Given will do that for them. Wow, for a book a week? For yes, 52 weeks? Exactly. That's a lot. Which Jeez. is a lot and it all works. Maybe it's like very loose. It, it's You see actually well, in some of the collection editions, like, it's it's not as loose as you'd think. Like it's not just stick <laughs> yeah, figures a lot in there. floating in space. Like there's a lot of detail that Giffen provides these other artists who are all incredibly talented, whose names I will leave out of this episode. So. <laughs> There is a lot of coordination that goes in here to an event that essentially Dan DiDio helped to foster that then he immediately hated and regretted. And it's interesting because <laughs> it's also one of the most beloved things that came out of DC and Dan DiDio uh, is famous or infamous for loathing it and shouting about how much it sucks and how much he hated it in the middle of meetings or during the work week at DC Comics. Which, uh, That's you know, weird. represents a lot about what you might think about Dan DiDio's uh, quality control system. <laughs> uh, because it's beloved. Incidentally, uh, there would be another 52 called Countdown, which is all DiDio. He's like, I'm gonna fix 52 uh -huh. by doing one of the most reviled events in DC's history called Countdown. Which one day we'll cover, but we don't really need to because it's a countdown to Final Crisis. So whatever. But I digress. So what's 52 about? Well, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman are gone. What are they doing? Who gives a crap? Superman is depowered. So he's Clark Kent right now. He's working for the Daily Planet. Hmm. It's actually a funny plot. Uh, okay, speaking of plots, there's like six of them. And they oh, all man. start out kind of like divergently, but then they all coerce, but then they all converge because we're dealing with professionals here. There's right. a convergence? No. <laughs> In terms of narrative structure, yes, there is a convergence of plot threads that all uh, intertwine. You also might hear a couple of things where you're like, that sounds really familiar. And it's like, yeah, because that was a really good idea that set up the character in future versions of that character, like Black Adam. At this point, Black Adam was evil Shazam. Which is what he's always been, right? But, yes. <laughs> Uh, but no, he's also box office poison. Uh, but <laughs> well, now, well now. But back then, uh, he was just kind of evil Shazam, and you could tell like John's like, I got an idea for Black Adam, mm. how to make him important, and they do, and it works <laughs> in this. So would you say this book is a collection of like, I got an idea for X character? Yes. By four like really good writers. Yeah, and it's also like, oh my God, we get to make them important. Like I have an idea for the recently widowed Ralph Dibney. Here's something. Yeah. You know, and I've got an idea. Nobody can ask, but what is Superman? Like, why isn't Superman just he's fix gone. it? Because he's gone. He's busy. Exactly. No one can poke holes in my boat. Right. So, okay, so there's a Booster Gold plot line. He's the main character of 52. Oh. I mean, not he's really. He's the main character? I would say that. Then why is Steel on the cover? Because, Ste because <laughs> that's this the first guy? volume. That's, that's Black, Black Adam. Adam. Oh, Black Adam, right. No, I guess that's Lois. Yeah, Booster no. Gold's barely on this cover. That's someone. That's a woman. Yeah. Who's we'll get into it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, new character. All right. Oh. So, so it's after the Infinite Crisis. Everybody remembers that this crap happened and that like everything's messed up and crazy and that like the world maybe almost ended. But mm -hmm. and, and most of the time well, we got through it. Yeah, but most of the time regular people don't remember that crap, but now they do. Right. And a lot some of the heroes died. Like Superboy Prime like killed all of uh, the New Bloods, for example. Right, the New Bloods. Oh no. Yeah. Nobody cares. But uh, <laughs> but they did die. And uh, so did Panther, by the way, from the New Titans. Oh, yeah. Oh. So, but the, 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 humanity is kind of like, whew, kind of feels like I dodged a bullet, like right. cosmically. And they're like, yeah. Do people know that Superman's gone? Uh, is that like they a known noticed. thing, or are they like, where's Superman? Oh my god! There is no like public clamoring for Superman to return. It's weird. Hmm. Um, but okay. you don't. There really are really care. scathing editorials from Clark Kent about it. <laughs> <laughs> But they the only Superman would just get his powers right? back and show back up. Like everyone's just generally aware that's like, yeah, he's not coming. Don't, don't. Yeah, hope yeah. For no, it. well, no, well. It's interesting because one character in particular is thrilled that Superman isn't around and has a lot of story to do. Like Lex Luthor. Like Lex Luthor. Yeah. Okay. And but when I say like, I mean it is. And so <laughs> uh, that should be. Yeah. yeah. But if he but didn't have something to do. That would be like, it would why be isn't he taking over Metropolis? Exactly, but he isn't. Uh, instead, he has like a business venture that he's working on, which is uh. great. Well, also, it's no fair to take like Metropolis away if Superman's not there. Right, yeah, exactly. I gotta defeat Superman. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna wait until he shows back up and then I'll be evil again. Uh, no, he's plenty evil already. But uh, so Steel kind of tries to step up, but also so does Booster Gold. And Booster Gold's like, I'm back, baby, and I'm gonna take Metropolis by storm, and mm -hmm. also I used to be on the Justice F by yeah. by Doomsday. Doomsday. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah, I don't remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I know more like I heroically defended Metropolis from Doomsday and fell in the line of duty. But now I'm back, and I'm taking brand deals. And so you can see, like, 
Booster Gold is fighting Intergang in Metropolis. Intergang actually normally is kind of like a throwaway, okay, who gives a crap group that is like, oh no, things are tough. But in this case, yes, they are jobbers that are used to show Booster Gold is protecting Metropolis, but also they have a real serious thing going on in the story, which is that they're trying to take over Gotham because Batman's gone. Ah. And he took some Robins with him. Uh, if you don't, before we get started, don't ask where Huntress is. She is not in this. So <laughs> wait, did he also take Alfred? my mind. Alfred is not. I in always that. ask where Huntress oh, is. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I'm like, well, but what about Huntress? What about Huntress? I, she should be just there. She's so like forgotten. Yes. Yeah. But she's like kind of in the family, but yeah, like she's not. Like, she's like a third cousin twice removed yeah. from the Bat family. What about Huntress? No one asked. No one asked. And who? Uh, we do need to introduce a new Bat character who previously heretofore had not been introduced for a good long time, and that would be Batwoman. This also is the book that introduces Batwoman to the DC universe. Is this what oh. leads up to that like really incredible run? Yes, it is. Cool. Uh, we also need to establish a couple other characters. Renee Montoya. She's having a hard time. She's hard drinking. She's hard on her uh, luck. She's miserable, Same. and uh, she is uh, visited by Vic Sage, aka mm -hmm. the Question. And he's like, "Hey, you're important. Let's do this. I need you to do this, that, and the other thing." And she's like, "No, leave me alone, you creepy blank face douche." <laughs> and uh, he's like, "Come on, go to this. Go to this address. I'll give you a bunch of money." And she's like, "Fine. I really do need that money, though." Uh -huh. So she takes the money. She goes to like this address and uh, and gets embroiled in some shenanigans with the Question, which we'll get into. But it's a whole uh, thing. It's it's one of the main plots of the story, okay. actually. And we is, just we just jump right into it. We just here you go. Like the question. This is what this book's about. Unironically, the question's like, "There's a mystery afoot, and I need <laughs> you to be involved in it." Renee <laughs> Montoya is a cop, correct? She yeah. was. I think she's off the force at this point. Mm. But yeah. Okay. Uh, Booster Gold's taking brand deals. He's he's protecting Metropolis and also grandstanding and glad handing and doing all the things that that happens. Uh, He's able to do this, not just because he's got a super-powered suit and he's from the future, but because he's got Skeets, his little robot sidekick, who's from the future and has a computer memory. So he knows where any important moment <laughs> in history might be that would be calamitous. So he's able to circumvent those moments via Skeets' uh, memory banks and then goes and does it like he's doing it for the first time. Uh, well, but doesn't that change history? So yes, now it does. the robot shouldn't remember anymore because it, it's it's now different. It should, but it doesn't. Oh. well, I it's guess also only like, if they were consequential. Like yeah, if, if they, one event led to the next event, right? That he had to right. Stop. So he can't save anything or stop anything too important because right. that would affect everything. It looks like he's using it ghoulishly too. He is. No, he's like he's in Metropolis. He's like, yeah, let's do this, and they're just like, oh, uh, Superboy died. The Superboy of Connor Kent you know, the clone. Uh -huh. uh, he died heroically protecting reality, and so he's kind of like the main tragedy from Infinite Crisis. He's the main casualty. Right. Everyone's like really everyone sad. remembers his sacrifice. Exactly, yeah. and so, you know, like, Booster Gold is like endorsing soda brands, and he's like shaking hands and waving, and Skeets is like his campaign manager, basically, like reminding mm -hmm. him like, hey man, like Superboy died here, you gotta remember to like pull it back. He's like, oh my goodness, poor Superboy. <laughs> anyway, I don't care, moving on. Uh, Booster Gold will ride high for a while until he flies too close to the sun. One of those problems is uh, he he realizes like he's too effective, and mm. he also doesn't have like an arch nemesis, and so he hires a guy. Is this I'm just sorry. mystery men? Yeah, kinda. So he <laughs> hires a guy to pretend to be a supervillain, rough things up, and then he pays him behind the scenes. Uh, to be defeated. Well, yeah, it's, but he can see the future. Right, but like... But he still needs to cheat? Well, like, no, even no, more than that? He has access to, like, data banks from the future, but it's so far in the future, he only has, like, really key moments, uh, so he needs okay. to fill in those gaps with, like, more heroism, but he's a bad superhero, so he's not going to be able to, like, I stop crime like, I can't live up to these, like, handful of events that I'm stopping in my day-to-day -day existence because I don't have the necessary, like, Equipment, intel. yeah. So I, <laughs> I need to make myself look... Heroic uh -huh. by having a straw man yes. that I can destroy. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this guy eventually has a turn of heart and then uh, outs him to the press. And so Booster Gold's well, uh, crap falls apart almost immediately. That's why he should have threatened him. Yep. Like a mob <laughs> boss would. Be like, <laughs> but if you not, out me, I'll kill you. He's not a monster, he's just a uh, dumbass. Yeah, and that guy sensed that, and that's why yeah. he felt comfortable. Well, Booster Gold's out. about to kill that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't. He just kind of like leaves. But uh, I, I also should point out that like this kind of kicked off because there's a moment where everyone shows up to Connor's memorial, and 
Booster Gold knows from the history books that this is the moment when Superman comes and he gives a rousing speech to every hero in attendance and then announces the new Justice League of which Booster Gold is a member. Uh -huh. So Booster Gold's like, I'm gonna be a Justice Leaguer soon and that'll help my brand and all that stuff, but also like, this is the moment where I get to be a real superhero, even though Again. he's been a member of the Justice League, <laughs> but not like the good one. Right. And so he's so excited, he goes there, and he's like counting down, everyone's like really sad because they're there for a funeral. And he's just smiling he's away. He's just like, yeah, this is awesome. And they're like, okay. And then he counts it down and Superman doesn't show up. And he's like, Skeets, what the crap is wrong with you? And Skeets like, oh, uh, sorry. I guess like there's something wrong with my chronometer or something. I guess someone changed history. Yeah, and he's and it's great because he's like freaking out. He's like, no, this is wrong, Superman's here. And he like freaks, and people are grabbing him like, Booster, control yourself. And he, <laughs> and he elbows this dude in the face and reveals that person was Clark Kent, ace reporter, who's covering this event. Oh. And gives him a nosebleed so you know he's depowered. Right. Mm -hmm. And Clark's like, hey, Booster, Superman's not coming, man. <laughs> And Booster doesn't know yeah. that he Clark Kent is Superman. And Skeets is like, oh, I'm not going to tell him, even though it's very obvious. <laughs> <laughs> so Booster, I, I think that's what kind of like cracks in Booster's brain and goes like, oh, well, it's all horseshit then. Whatever, I'm a monster. <laughs> and goes on this like pilgrimage to, you know, sell out, essentially. Okay. More so. More so than he ever did. Sure. But yeah, uh, so that's his plot. Okay. Is the fall of Booster Gold, the rise and fall <laughs> of Booster Gold. Uh, Sue Dibney was raped and murdered in Identity Crisis, and then Ralph Dibney, the elongated man, got really sad about it, as you would imagine, and uh, no one knew what to do with him after that. So here he is, and he's miserable, and he stopped taking this, the, the, the medicine or serum that makes him the elongated man, so now he's just mad. Sad man. That's, that's that's everybody. They call him man. Well, no, I'm oh, just, I'm okay. just you him call him man. Okay. But he's like <laughs> he's just really sad and suicidal. And uh, he gets a call one day while he's about to kill himself. And uh, that oh, call Jesus. is like, you really need to go visit your wife's grave. And when he gets there, someone has spray painted an upside down Superman logo on her grave. What? And he's like, what? The, what? That's random like, and awful. I'm already at my lowest point, and now I've reached below rock bottom. Thank you. Question about the elongated man. Yes. Maybe this is inappropriate, but if he was to shoot himself in the head, could his head simply stretch yes. behind the bullet? If and then he, he were would... taking that yeah, stuff. Yeah, but not up. if he's not taking the serum. Oh, right, yeah, he's he not taking it off. So yeah, yeah no, he yeah. is He is very much malleable man. Okay. So. He is squishy flesh man. Exactly, he is killable man. But not, but not squishy enough. No. <laughs> okay. The other shtick is that he and his wife are detectives. Right. Not anymore, they're not. No. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, he might still be. Well, he oh, becomes he could one be. again because mm. now there's a mystery afoot. Who defaced my wife's grave? But, right. I have one last mystery before I kill myself. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that is literally his plot. So, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to find my wife's to, like, like, grave it. to face her uh, so I could kill myself. Right. Exactly. It's horrific. Uh, but it's interesting because Elongated Man goes out like a weird mystery. Because, like, you know, he's, he, he's a. Yay. She's there. So, you found Huntress, <laughs> Gold Star. Hey, we asked and the question was answered. Yeah. That's right, the book delivered. She's That's all by herself. Look at her. Yep, she in. showed up. No one asked you to be here, Huntress. Yep. How did you get this address? <laughs> she still has a communicator, I'm sure. <laughs> that she uses. Yeah, they forgot to turn it off. Yeah. They pay for the group plan. Uh, so that's the plot with them. Okay. Uh, so that's only like three plots though. You said there were six. I, I know. Okay, I'm we're going getting to with it. More. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there's also another plot, which is Steel, John Henry Irons has his niece, Natasha, and uh, he has given her a super suit of her own, like another steel suit, and- It's crazy looking. Yeah, yeah. it is. He is also like a real hard ass, and I like I, I appreciate it, but also it's like it's you're coming out a lot stronger than you need to be, mm. and it's one of those tropes where uh, just sit down and talk to each other, and yeah. your problems will be solved. But you have a lot of like, no, I don't want to hear from you, <laughs> and it's like Ugh. it's like John Henry Irons is like super aggressive, and then she like pushes her away, and then goes, if only you'd stayed for another twelve seconds, I could have actually articulated what you need to know in order to not. <laughs> heel turn like this. Right. But that also is like how we can able, how we're able to extend that story of over 52 issues. Yeah. Uh, but the point being, you know, she's like, yeah, I'm gonna be a Just Leaguer, a Titan, like I'm doing my thing and I'm doing great. And he's like, okay, but like you need to like 
go to school. Like you need to learn how your suit works. Like you uh, need to be as smart as I am, who's a super genius. Yeah, I can't just be your Q all the time. Exactly. Like, I'll die. Well, I will one day die, and then you will be just like SOL. You know, uh -huh. you'll just be reliant on other people. I need you to be self-reliant, and the best way to do that is to just like browbeat you constantly, <laughs> until finally she's like, "No, I'm not going to take this," and she runs away. And so he turns off her suit. And I'm going so, to art school instead. Yeah, so her suit like explodes off of her, and he's like. You can't wear that. Until you know how it works, it can make it work again. Right. You can't have it. So she's like, F. So she leaves. <laughs> Thankfully, Lex Luthor coincidentally and clandestinely is developing this new program. Uh, and that program is a drug, is a gene therapy experience that you can go through to get superpowers. I see. So uh. he sucks her in and yeah. gives her superpowers. Yes, yeah. he tempts her. Uh, brings her in. John Henry Irons shows up, and he's like, "This is not happening." And Luther's like, "Oh, look, it's John Henry Irons!" Like he shakes his hand and like lets him go, mm -hmm. uh, and infects him with the gene therapy that all these people are going through. And so John Henry Irons becomes Steel, not just in name, but also in appearance and physiology. When he like succumbs and grabs his computer and literally grows like a second Steel skin outside of his body. When Natasha sees that Steel went through the program, though obviously he didn't do it willingly, uh -huh. she's like, "You hypocrite!" <laughs> and then joins Luther. <laughs> Okay. I was gonna say no until I saw this. Right. It wasn't He's even like, like she was I didn't say no, do it. it. Someone did it to me. And she's like, oh yeah, like Lex sure. Luthor would just like give you oh, that. We don't even get to that moment because she's like, woo hoo, -hoo <laughs> out the door before he's able to to talk about it. I see. I, Does he uh, fret about being a hideous monster? No. Or, well, no. Or can he turn it off? N he can't turn it off. Oh. But he's, he looks like himself, but just just steel. Yeah. If I learned anything from the thing, is that this is the worst thing that could happen to a person. It's not rocks. It's metal. <laughs> That's true, but he knows other metal characters, Colossus, for example. And now Colossus can turn it off, but mm. when he is metal, it's a he's big just difference. rad. But he also looks like himself. That's yeah. true, he does look like right, himself. But he is metal, though. But yeah, he still he looks, looks like, like himself. But, but like a weird alien version of himself. Yeah, but yeah, well, this is a world where aliens exist, you yes. know? Like, yeah. Yeah. He's still gonna get laid. So that's that, true. That's the steel plot, is that Natasha joins up with Luther, and Luther handpicks a, a group of young heroes, or youngsters who are then imbued with powers and then made into heroes, and forms a new team called Infinity Inc., which is a throwback because Grant Morrison's involved. <laughs> uh, or Mark Do Wade or uh, uh, Gr Jeff Johns, depending on how old whichever version of the thing we're referencing is proportionate to the writer who is writing it. Right. Uh, so, yeah. Do uh, we know any of the rest of them or only? They're all made up new characters okay. and they're all not important if we're trying to do like an hour or two of the show. <laughs> uh, okay. But the point is that they are Infinity Inc. and they're like sent out there and there is no Justice League because Superman doesn't form one. So we're just kind of like stuck. There right. will be a Justice League that's formed and it I sucks and they'll lose. Okay, good. There is one that's formed. <laughs> yeah. I got, couldn't anyone just be like, that guy is Kyle Jordan or Aquaman is like, uh, yeah. uh, I'm gonna make a Justice League now. Yeah, Aquaman has like a backup story and nobody cares. Uh, Firestorm, who's a new Firestorm, uh, forms a Justice League with Ambush Bug and begs uh, Green Arrow to join. Green Arrow says that he'll be there in a week to collect the Justice League communicator they have. I'm sorry. Because how dare you? You <laughs> just called a character Ambush Bug? Yeah, there's Ambush Bug. Ambush Bug is essentially like a proto Deadpool or Freakazoid character. He's like a fourth wall breaking, silly character that was created by like Keith Giffen ah. to, to, to meta textually rib the comic book industry and also be. Uh, you know, it's plaything. Yeah. Is this okay. the, is this that that team? Yes, that's Infinity Inc. Okay, that guy's clearly a bad guy. He's not. But look at him. I know. He's just and drawn yet, that way. Like I wouldn't. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Like I, would, I wouldn't lead with him. No. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You, you, he, you have him out as your front man. Look at his man. hands. He's I know. He's clearly not the front man. You I put can't. him like, he goes like that. Yeah, he there. should go I in the back. I can't help you. Get look, behind the no, 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 you can't less hide creepy that. looking. Yeah. Everyone's going to have more questions if you try and hide Exactly. He's he's like, but he's menacing. Yeah, well. Yeah. Not his, a smile, Tiffany. The look he's giving Steel is justifying Steel's uh, behavior toward him. Yeah. You might notice that, well, Steel also is literally attacking Luther. Yeah. Because he's like, you turn me into a monster! And Luther's like, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. You see 
seem better to me. <laughs> and then Infinity Inc. shows up to step in, and he's like, he's, you know, now a superpowered person is attacking a regular civilian. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, Lex Luthor is not a regular civilian. <laughs> yeah. Everyone should realize yeah. that. That's true, but he's not superpowered. Uh, despite the fact that he created the whole program so he can give himself superpowers. What the hell is happening there? Uh, oh, don't worry molecular about Molecular fusion. Of a person? Uh, yes. I, I say there's more than one person there. Yeah, there's a couple. There's a two of in there. Yeah, it's like three Trons. <laughs> okay, so what you're referring Nobody wants that. The, okay, that, that actually segues perfectly into another oh, plot line, okay. Okay. which is that there was a Zeta B malfunction, and a bunch of characters are either like fused or merged or stuck in a wall or, or disappeared or big? dead. Yeah, characters that are thought dead are actually off in space somewhere or lost in other areas that then eventually return to their uh, present place, like Alan Scott, who loses an eye. Mm. Uh, or they got oh, no. bizarrely know, amalgamed. Right? Yes, uh, like a new fire storm. So uh, there's a plot that takes place in outer space, which stars Animal Man and Adam Strange hmm. uh, and Lobo, uh, which is that they're out in outer space and they're trying to get home. They're just, wait, who is Adam Strange in this world? <laughs> Adam Strange is uh, a Flash Gordon-esque hero who, when he's hit by a Zeta Beam, uh, sends him to uh, Ran, uh, where he is oh, yeah. so right. he is a John okay. Carter uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, character. That's right. Duh. He also has a fantastic series called Strange Adventures, which is written by Tom King. Yeah, it yeah. is It is a fantastic. And That's one day we'll maybe cover it on the, book, on, the sh on the couch, but I will say it's not indicative of most Adam Strange Adventures. This is an opportunity for us to kind of like also do Annihilation while we're doing this. Like, you know, oh. there was Civil War, the terrestrial uh, main event, and then there was Annihilation, which was the space uh, event at Marvel. Right. Uh, that happened concurrently, but also had nothing to do with each other. DC is like, oh, we could do that. We could do that too. Yeah. There where they go. And so we have a story just about a bunch of like misfit castaway superheroes who are just desperately trying to get home, but can't. Like they keep getting caught up in shit. Mm, like and Voyager. Yeah, it's kind of like Voyager. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it's like Voyager. Yeah. Uh, but it's funny because you know, you're like, poor animal man. You know, he's just this dude who's got a family, who just wants to go home. His powers are, he could approximate, he can uh, like kind of borrow powers from any nearby animal. <laughs> you know, so it's like, I need to run fast. I hope there's a cheetah nearby. Well, you're in nope. space, so there's not. Yeah, right. <laughs> So he's kind of like, like, I'm not supposed to be in space. Forever. Exactly, so he's like, man, right? So he's there. And it's funny because like, everyone assumes that most of these characters are dead, uh, but Animal Man's family believes in him so much that they're just like, he'll be back. Hmm. Like they have a banner ready for him, like, welcome home. Right. So you're, just, you're rooting for him. You're like, come on, man. <laughs> Uh, also, it's funny because like he is a family man. He's married his children, and he's like, "Oh, he's a family man? I thought that was animal man." <laughs> <laughs> so he's trapped on this like seemingly paradise with Starfire, who's like, "I am down." <laughs> Wait, there's also there's one more plot that's clear you haven't started yet. Yeah, what's that? Yeah, we gotta start it's, the, it's the third six plot. Oh yes, seven, the Black Adam plot. Oh yeah. yeah. Like there was just there was like I was just going through didn't the early pages. It, but, like, yeah, I didn't. Going yeah, the Black Adam plot is that uh, Black Adam is, you know, I've, I'm I'm here in Kondok, this made up country, I'm in charge of it or whatever, and I'm doing mm -hmm. my thing. Made up to us, right? They, he doesn't think it's made up. No, we, okay. we know it's made up because we're here in the real world. Right. Um, <laughs> But, I thought uh, maybe in in con DC continuity it's a made up country. Yeah, they're like we don't we don't really accept it. As he a calls it a country. Nobody else. Does. No, it's a real country <laughs> here <laughs> in this world. Right. But uh, no. Okay. So essentially, Black Adam declares himself like Lord and Master of this country. Oh, and, for a change. Yeah, and no one is allowed inside except for like people that he deems worthy and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, he also makes alliances with other countries that uh, coincidentally don't have relations with the United States and uh, tries to form like a kind of a superpower, you know, like, a, like an axis, if you will. Okay. And uh, when he is meeting up with these like bad guy places with bad guy super powered people. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is Intergang, who is like, who gives him an offering of this woman because like they're also in the sex trade. Oh. Uh, Black Adam is repulsed by this concept. Black Adam befriends the slave and- uh, I guess he could just return her home if you really wanted to apologize. Yeah, no. Well, they, they have a conversation first because she, she's she can't talking go about- go home because she'll be punted or something. No, or, no, 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 because yeah. she has a brother too that was also kidnapped oh. and so she's like looking for him. But uh, she's also, she's clearly like a humanitarian in nature because immediately when she's interacting with him, like she speaks, you know, directly to him, she's not interested, she's not impressed or intimidated by Black Adam at all. And he's like really, not like turned on, but he's excited by that. He's like, all right, cool, like good for you, you know? Like mm -hmm. you're a strong-willed person. And, um, but her 
compassion is what really like cuts through to Black Adam, and essentially the two of them strike up a rapport. Mm. So despite the fact that like she was given to him as a slave, uh, they do end up having like a, a kind of relationship that uh, evolves into a kind of like partnership where you know she's like, if you're going to be in charge of this country, like, <laughs> you got to like know how to do that, and not like that she forces him to like you know take. Know, government classes and understand like how like, like public relations civics, work. Right? No, but yeah. her warm Kondakian song melts his uh, icy heart. <laughs> That's right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so uh, he takes her to like this monument to his own family and uh, talks about like his origins and all that. Where he's and like, this uh, is where I get my authority to rule from. Yeah. Exactly. She's like, no, no, that's no. arbitrary. Ex exactly. <laughs> so then he brings her to the Rock of Eternity and introduces her to Shazam or Captain Marvel at this time. It's like, see, uh, no, it's it's real. It's magic. Exactly. Magic says that I should be in charge. That's right. See, yeah, yeah. Uh, Captain Marvel's having his own problem. That's why he's not a main character in the story. Uh, oh. Where he's trying to like, he's trying to keep all of the seven deadly sins at bay himself without like the help of the wizard. Essentially, Black Adam asks Billy or Captain Marvel to invite this woman into the family and share his power with her. So she does, and she becomes Isis now. She was Adriana, but now she is uh, the god Isis, or at least like the representative, the avatar of the god Isis. Oh good, because you know, if she was the, uh, the political group Isis, it'd be very different. Uh, exactly. <laughs> So, <laughs> which didn't exist when this book was written. Yeah. Uh, so, do, is Shazam no longer Shazam because no. he gave it to her? He no, just no, no. took Black a piece Adam of it. Black Adam shared his power. Oh, Black power. Adam shared. Oh, yeah, because okay. because Mar Captain Marvel can split his powers among the Marvel family, which includes like Mary and so forth. Oh, so Black Adam's like, I want a family too. Exactly. Oh. So he does. So he shares it with her. So now we've got like a female Black Adam, essentially. Did he want to share more costume with her, or this is what she, her her avatar, her god, He's wants like, her to look like? This is the appropriate amount of costume for you. You have enough. It's yeah. a, she seems pleased with it. All right, so we, we were just gonna it was roll. A little it. awkward because she was sold into the sex trade, <laughs> right? And she was more clothed before this. <laughs> yeah. So the two of them work together. Their new plan is to search for her brother. They do, okay. and like inner gang, uh, like beats the living crap out of him and paralyzes him. Uh, that all gets wrapped up because. Um, okay, so like, the question. This is this is why we didn't do this book for like ten years. Mm. Is because like there are all these plots and they're all really intricate and this book is incredible and it's really fun and you should read it because you watch as like characters will cross over or plot lines will coordinate and you're like, oh man, it's like they really planned this out. Whoa. <laughs> like they never do. Like they never have again. And it's like, what the crap is your problem? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I guess it's the fact that you have four Titanic writers yeah. and one artist doing all the coordination so it all feels like it works together. Why does he not like it? I don't Dio understand. Doesn't, Dio doesn't like it because like he didn't have it. Because uh, it wasn't his like brainchild? I think it had a lot to do with ego, but I think there's mm. another part of it, which is just Dio's. But that's from Marvel. What? Ego. I think it also has to do with his uh, his aversion to second stringers. Oh, he's like, yeah, but they're lame. Yeah, right. That's he's like so me at the beginning of the show, shitty. where it's like, well, but why is Booster Gold in this at all? This yeah, is boring. Why should it? Why do people like this so much? Well, ah. But 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 you should just be happy that they do. It, that they're making the second stringers dude, work. Uh, That's that, so weird. That is exactly the kind of conversation I've had. <laughs> yeah, and I can That's, tell you whew. that the, 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 those behind the scenes just go, I know, I know. <laughs> but you're still making money off this, right? right. Yeah. Why are you upset? Right. Why are you upset? So it has to be ego. Because yeah. I don't want booster gold money. Right. That's that's like that's like blood money. <laughs> booster gold sucks. Because he sucks. But uh, oh, so the question, Vic yes. Sage, he's dying of lung cancer because. He smokes, smokes all the time. He used to smoke a lot. And so uh, he's clearly like trying to train Montoya. Renee Montoya into becoming his replacement. Now Good we in the future question. know that will happen. I'm like, but, wait, doesn't that happen? Yes, uh, but in this, it, we, it had not. And so we go on this whole adventure where they're dealing with 
their, their main combatants are Intergang, who are trying to uh, make, make footholds in Gotham uh, via their creepy religion that worships the Crime Bible. And the Crime <laughs> Bible is actually Apocalyptean and uh, harbinges... But yep. The and, Crime Bible. Yes. <laughs> they got a real problem with crime and Apocalypse. Well, they are like... No, they they are hell. It, obviously. Exactly. Uh, but the Crime Bible is like how Mannheim uses like his... <laughs> Is a, he's able to enforce his will and like get uh, coordination together. Because is this like, an actual religious article? Yeah. No, they really have a book called the Crime Bible, and it has prophecies in it. Like the Are fact they that they, in English. Yes. Uh, well, once you start to believe in it, you start to read the lettering, and then you can read it like in whatever language you speak. Uh, but I mean, if they're picking a, a city for this, Gotham That's could not be better. Be exactly. Bad. Exactly. But also, they worship Cain. You know, because he's the first criminal. <laughs> well, okay. he does exist technically in the I'm sorry. universe. This has a re actual Christian religious, yeah. Judeo-Christian religious exactly. background. Yes. Yeah. Well, and there's a prophecy about Cain, and then you find out that like it's it's spelled wrong, and that it's actually uh, about sacrificing Kathy Cain, who will be introduced in this book Ooh. as Batwoman, who also will be retconned into being Renee Montoya's ex-girlfriend or ex long-term relationship because it wasn't just I think say girlfriend is to diminish their relationship they they were they were serious and Partners. intimate and uh, and then it became uh, dissolved because of an well you know they're they're, they're difficult people <laughs> and eventually uh, Kathy becomes Batwoman and be, in the absence of Batman she does her thing to become like a protector of Gotham uh, inner gang will ultimately kidnap Kathy and attempt to sacrifice her to bring about whatever prophecy they need. And, uh, you know, because Cain, you know, was spelled differently. Yeah, but why would they sacrifice her? Shouldn't they sacrifice, like, her sister or something? No, 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 oh, right, because of, like, the the, 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 the Cain kills Abel thing. Yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 it's all about, like, killing Cain. But uh, it doesn't matter. The, but the point is, that's what- <laughs> Yeah, but they brings... worship Cain. Yeah, I know, but, but like- They wanna the, kill her? But it's like, the, 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 it's like poetry, it rhymes. There's Cain's <laughs> all throughout the book. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so anyway, they rescue her, and then, uh, you know, it's- it, they, There's kind of, like, a very, kind of, like, shaky, uh, truce between uh, Renee and Kathy again. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of the plot. But uh, Inner Gang gets like all over the place. As we mentioned, you know, Inner Gang goes to Kondok. Uh, mm -hmm. Vic and Renee end up going to Kondok. Kind of like. What does their trip to Kondok have to do with taking over Gotham? Uh, Inner Gang <laughs> is making moves. I see. So and one of them taking is, over Gotham is a part of a larger thing. That's Mannheim's that's bag. The, like yeah. Mannheim is trying to take over Gotham because like there's no protector, but also Intergang is like making moves where they're like, oh, we should make friends with Black Adam though, oh. and so let's give him some women in the slave trade. That's, right, because they don't then, know anything about it. Right, and because <laughs> they don't know anything about him, and, and like, well, he's evil, right? That's what we are. That we're into that. <laughs> Uh, I'd be into that. Why wouldn't he? Uh, exactly. What's your problem, man? Uh, of course, ironically, then he turns her into like his wife and turns her into a superhero or equivalent mm -hmm. named Isis. Uh, but Vic and Renee go to Conduct because they hear through the grapevine that there's going to be uh, a bombing there, a suicide bombing, and they end up preventing it and saving the citizenry that appear at the like big uh, coronation ceremony for Isis. And that, and not that Isis, uh, and uh, Adriana. And so they get in the good graces of Black Adam, uh, but also Inner Gang kidnapped and put into the trade Adriana's brother. And so Vic and Renee end up helping in to save Isis's brother. Unfortunately, he was, def he, he was beaten horribly and paralyzed, oh. but uh, Isis's power, one of them, is that she's able to heal. Uh, but he's so messed up that she can't. Like, she, <laughs> Even though it's her power. Well, yeah, but like she heals to, to some degree. You know, it's 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 one quarter of just of, of a black out of power. Or right. So I didn't realize he could heal people. He doesn't. So you know, you didn't think about it. You know, it's like a it's like that Swiss Army piece that you don't think about using because you never have like a can. But uh, oh, the toothpick. Yeah, that's right, the toothpick. You never use that because why? Uh, once I've used it, it's gross. But uh, yeah, I'm not put that back inside. You can wash it. What the, what all that leads up to because the Black Adam plot's kind of the shortest is that like ah. they she they imbue power into him. And what does he become? Osiris. Ah. Oh. And so Osiris is the third member of the Black Adam family. And so they Black all have powers. Adam, Isis, Osiris. Yeah. Okay. That, that's it. 
And so that, and then that's all we get. But uh, oh. the, the, and Does the three he of them start calling himself Ra or something. No, it's just Black Adam. Oh, okay. Well, it's just to make <laughs> make them all have yeah. different. Yeah, I know. Names. No, but they all well. We start with Black Adam. That's his. That's his. <laughs> that's a cooler change name. Him. We're yeah, not going to okay. change him now. Is this like a bad Fair. guy mixer? That's the that, that's the yeah that's like him trying to like re- build together like a League of Nations of superpowers that okay. don't include any uh, of America's allies. Okay, mm. I was so gonna say Intergang should have been in, at this mixer. Yeah, they were. That's how they got the uh, you know the the thing. Oh, that's how they got their foot in the door for exactly uh, for the mm. for, for, for conduct. For, for, for do conduct. I ask my questions now? Please do. <laughs> okay. So what is? They're right. What do they all have to do with each other? Right, because like I, I see this guy and he's yelling and he's yelling the name of the book, so I have to assume <laughs> that this is important. Yes, fifty-two. The, 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 well, the number fifty-two comes up a number of times, and in fact, the Dio forces them to put in secret codes within the books later on in the weeks. When when it becomes apparent that this is getting away from him and becoming something that other people are going to be celebrated for, uh, he starts imposing his will. There's uh, at least one or two issues in this series that are not credited, but are clearly written entirely by DiDio because mm-hmm. they couldn't pull off what he was trying to achieve. And so, uh, but one of them is like, just giving away the end of the book through code. Oh, that's weird. And 52 is one of those things. By the way, this is also the beginning of DC's obsession with the number. 52. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, but 52 is the, is, is So it wasn't like a, a thing before this. It was not a thing okay. Okay. until this. And at first, it was just 52 because it was the 52 weeks in the year. Right. But also, there's 52 uh, somethings going on. Right. <laughs> this I'm just gonna <laughs> it, look. If we're not gonna have sex, I am gonna bathe over here nudely. That is, yeah. that is just her culture, supposedly. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. She's like, what? Right. It, it's not exploitative. It's just what she is naturally. Also, we are gonna talk about whatever this is. Oh, the Ralph Dibney plot. Because okay, um, so um, I'm gonna need an explanation. What? Yeah. To so this. Ralph gets caught up in the cult of Connor. So the uh, the upside down Superman S is actually Kryptonian. Like I know the S is, but putting the S upside down is as well. You mm. know the S stands for hope. Well, upside down it stands for resurrection. Well, is that doesn't up- make any sense. Oh, why not? <laughs> it's a made up thing. Yeah, well, it should be like opposite. Why or would something. the S be hope? <laughs> but wasn't like the justice. <laughs> Why would it be upside like, down? Be like that's like reversing it almost. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Okay. Wasn't that whole thing about like the Justice League's base, and then the opposite of that was the symbol of doom? Oh yeah, that that's the totality. Yeah. Yeah. It it doesn't have to anything to do with it, unfortunately. Yeah, but reversing it. I know becomes a thing. Yeah, it's supposed to be opposite. Oh yeah, it should be. Yeah, but it isn't. But it's not really the S then. It must just be the actual crest shape because the S is still an S when it's upside yeah, it's down. Still only when the S is in a crest. I don't know. It doesn't yeah. matter. The point is that it, like that means resurrection. Okay. <laughs> All right. And so, wait, is it because of the shape? Is it the upside down like yeah, you maybe know, it's pentagon? That, okay. That's what I'm saying. Up. Yeah, uh, maybe. Like, sure. Okay. Whatever. They just made it up. It, it's never been the thing until this. That's why it's like. Okay. Yeah, I was just, just expecting to it, it to be like bad because like an upside down well, it's thing bad. usually that, it, like it's, it was, inverts it was, the meaning. Well, yes, because it was painted on a grave. You're supposed right. to think, whoa, that's pretty messed up. And then it turns out that like, oh no, it's actually like hopeful and, and, and innocuous. Mm. Oh, is she in a Kryptonian healing coma? Is that what that means? That's, well, no, <laughs> she's not. Cause that's oh. resurrection, she's, it's on her grave. Well, here's the thing is that, there, okay. So after the death of Connor Kent, Superboy, mm-hmm. um, a cult arose around him because the last time we had a Superman, he died and came oh, back to life. So, so there's a he's cult. He's going to come back. He's going to come back too. And so they are part of this like resurrection cult that ha- that that is believing that that Connor will rise again. Why they all believe in Connor? I think because he died for their sins. You know, like he's <laughs> he protected them and died for them. But like right. the point is that like a group has created a cult surrounding him that also includes Cassie Sandsmark, who was his teammate on Young Justice, who also would be Wonder Girl or Wonder Woman, depending on what timeline you're dealing with. But. Cassie is a friend slash teammate of Connor, and she is also part of this cult, and so she's why uh, Ralph is involved in all, because uh, why would anyone paint a, re- a Kryptonian resurrection symbol on a dead woman who's been dead for a couple of years now, uh, especially one that's the wife of a superhero that's like to do with Superman? And that would be because <laughs> they're going to resurrect Connor, but they need to make sure that their resurrection protocols, their plan, works, so they're gonna test it on Sue Dibney. And that was their warning. Great. Yeah, gross. <laughs> that, that was their warning. Yeah, because just they warning you, we're gonna just want to let you know we're gonna be resurrecting your wife. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if you're okay with this, do nothing. Yeah. Y- this yes. is a breadcrumb for you to follow. Yes, and so they do, and they go to like his storage unit where they find her stuff, 
and they find that like a, like one of her dresses is missing, and he's like, oh no, and so he gets like caught like, up. Oh, and, this is ghoulish. Oh, yes, geez. and then we find out they make like a straw doll of her wearing her clothes. Oh. Okay, now do you see why I needed answers? There's even more answers I need. Oh, it's I, worse because it gets, it, it so, gets worse because like uh, essentially uh, Ralph crap. is like, there's no there's no freaking way. So he calls up like Ollie Green Arrow who's not really doing anything important right now. He's like, mm -hmm. I'm in charge of uh, of my city, but also I'm bad at it and the city's falling apart. Oh. And I don't have any money. It turns out it's really hard without, you know, the call Superman when things get really bad. Yeah. So uh, uh, basically Ralph is like, I'm in. Because that is essentially what Cassie's trying to do. Like lure him in being like, we're gonna resurrect your wife and you're gonna help me and we're gonna work this out. So he's like, yeah, I'm in. Okay. So he joins up, but also calls up his friends, which includes Green Arrow. And so, and, and so they dress up in robes too to mm -hmm. spring into action when things don't work out. Right, when uh, inevitably this turns out to be like evil and not good. And sinister, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, they, 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 make, they take like a photo of her and they like put it over the straw uh. face. Yeah, it's gross and horrible, I hate it. Uh, but it's also like supposed to be, so yeah. you're, you know, you're in. Uh, yeah. So Ralph is in and so they're, they're doing their, their, their ritual, right? Uh -huh. And uh, at that point, uh, I'm trying like to remember like what goes bad. What, what's the rock? Oh, uh, it's it's blood rock. kryptonite. It's blood kryptonite, yeah. Oh. You don't want that blood kryptonite. Blood kryptonite. Yeah. So they hand Ralph the blood kryptonite. And he's like, this isn't real. Oh. This is all fake. Damn it. Like the whole thing is a grift. But like they don't know that they're just stupid. Is it is it that it's not real blood kryptonite or he's like blood kryptonite? Th that's not real. That's just a random. It's just a made up thing. Th yeah. Okay. There's red kryptonite. We know what red kryptonite is. Yeah. This ain't it. This ain't yeah. it. So he's okay. like, all right. So he calls up his friends Rex Mason, the uh, Metamorpho, and uh, and Green Arrow, and he's like, all right, guys. And Green Lantern. And Green Lantern. How's there? <laughs> and he's like, that's enough. And they're like, all right. <laughs> so then the jig is up, and uh, so. They, 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 uh, a, a fight breaks out. You know, Wonder Girl's obviously like, no. You know, so they have somebody super powered to fight. Uh, a fire erupts and uh, things go bad. And everybody starts getting out of there. Uh, Hal uh, waylays, uh, Cassie takes her away. And in the middle of the melee, Ralph looks at the straw doll. No. And it starts to crawl towards him. <sighs> no! And says, Ralph. Please, and he's like, wait, it's working. The damn thing catches fire, she dies all over it. Yeah. What? Or, what the absolute crap? Or Ralph is having a break with reality, and that's what Ralph sees. But I think we're meant to think that it's starting to work. Oh my God. So, it falls apart. And Ralph's like, what, 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 was, what started out as Ralph taking down a bunch of ghoulish cultists, who were who dared to you know steal his wife's shit, turns into a holy quest that Ralph an unholy quest actually <laughs> that Ralph goes on to try and re-resurrect his wife. Oh my god! That ain't your wife, man. So it's a pile of sticks. Yeah, well that sticks. He leaves the sticks alone. That's not that. That's over. He's like, okay, well that didn't work. That's not even her, her body. So Ralph goes on. So Ralph, this like kind of grounded like you know yeah. detective character, goes on a journey through the magic world of the DC universe. Huh. And he ends up getting uh, sucked into uh, a, a mystery, a Detective Chimp gets involved, but uh, <laughs> he gets the helm of Dr. Fate. And he, and he carries it with him and, Do and Nabu is talking to him, being like, if you want to bring your wife back, it's gonna cost you, but I can help you. And so, so he Ralph gets Doctor Fate's helmet. Does Doctor Fate need that? He's dead or not here. But uh, <laughs> Ralph takes the helmet, and Nabu takes him along a journey, uh, where well, he is. will uh, hope to resurrect Sue. That story can wrap up and has nothing to do with anything. So right, I can, okay. I can give you that one. Thank so, you. So <laughs> Ralph uh, ends up uh, th going through a number of adventures, which include the Spectre. There's also a great moment where he gets like a gun that's part of it, and everything. If you were like, oh, there's an artifact, yes. Like if you're asking if there's any tangential connection to DC continuity, yes. Is there a character that was like, it, here that's introduced now that exists in the Golden Age? Yes, like yes. There's a character named Egg Fu. He shouldn't be, exist and he does and he was a thing. Definitely Grant Morrison brought them in. Uh -huh. But uh, so Ralph gets this gun. It's like a magic wish granting gun, but it's not gonna bring back Sue. <laughs> 
No, that only grants wishes if I want to kill that person. Right, exactly, but... but well, there are a few uh, ground rules, oh, uh, provisos. <laughs> A couple of quid pro quos. <laughs> so he takes the gun and he carries that with him, but Nabba brings him on a whole journey. The Spectre intercepts Ralph and is like, all right, come on. So the Spectre takes Ralph and the Spectre's like, I will give you your wife back. If you find Jean Loring, the ex-wife of the Adam, who murdered Sue, and kill her. What? Because I'm an agent of vengeance. Take out your rightful vengeance uh. and kill your wife's murderer, and I will give her back to you. Uh. Now, incidentally, that seems pretty straightforward. Uh, I, I, I take the deal. But uh, incidentally, Jean has become the new Eclipso. So, uh, that oh, that might be a little harder. It's a little harder, but you know, whatever. So she's Eclipsoing out. And, uh, but the Spectre's taking her kind of like on a Kingdom Come-esque Norman McRae, like, huh. look at them, you can't see it. Oh, I guess uh, uh, A Christmas Carol. But uh, that being said, you know, he's like, look at her, look at her freaking out in Eclipse. Like, She's bad, kill her. And he doesn't. He's like, no, hmm. I'm not gonna do that. Not like that. Not like this. <laughs> so Spectre's like, well, suit yourself. Okay. Poof, so he leaves. I mean, it would've worked though. Yeah. Ralph goes to the Tower of Fate with Nabu, and he creates a circle which, uh, you know, because Ralph has like picked up a bunch of like magical artifacts and he's been reading and learning and shit throughout. It's kind of fun to watch like Ralph, this like, you know, this poor schlub, become a kind of wizard in his own right. But he creates a circle that is a protection circle that will keep them from harm while they do this resurrection uh, circle. Because the last time that happened, she, she erupted in flames. So let's try not to let that happen again. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, Okay, she erupted in flames because the entire building went up in flames and she was made of twigs. Well, that's true, but like, let's not let that happen again. Yeah, so maybe not make our wife out of kindling. Yeah, Ralph throughout this series has been drinking heavily, which is par for the course for this poor character. <laughs> uh, and he has a flask because he's been drinking from the entire time. And it's just kind of like a moment where you're like, no, oh, poor Ralph. And like, you're just kind of like, oh, Oh, it kind of hammers home. Ralph is in a vulnerable place. He clearly wants to die. <laughs> He's unhappy. Uh, so he takes one last swig of his flask, and then Nabu's like, put on the helm of Dr. Fate, and we'll do this. So he puts on the helm, breaks out the magic wish-granting gun, and then shoots himself in the head. What this does is cast out the spirit that is inhabiting the Helmet of Fate, which is not Nabu. It is, in fact, Felix Faust, who is a villain of the Justice League, who made a deal with Neron, who has been trying to screw with Ralph the entire time, but Ralph's a good detective and figured it out pretty much from the jump. Oh. Huh. That's complicated. But, but really a fun interesting. reveal. Yeah. Felix Faust was like, I'm going to kill you and I'm going to give it to Neron in exchange for my freedom. Who, of course, we've dealt with. He's the devil of yeah. the DC Universe in Underworld Unleashed. I'm gonna give it to Neron in exchange for my freedom. Ralph's like, yeah, I know, you piece of shit. This is not a protection spell that I've made. This is a binding spell that will keep you here in this circle. So then he reveals like the whole thing. Uh, Felix Faust conjures Neron and tries to kill Ralph Ralph reveals that he's been taking the serum that makes him the elongated man the whole time. That's not a flask of whiskey, oh. that's a flask of the serum. So he's able to beat up Felix Faust and not just be taken like a regular guy. And then they conjure Neron, you know. You, you uh, rang? You rang, yeah. Like, well, because Neron was part of the deal with Faust. Right. So he's like, all right, I'm here to take you. Um, I assume that you've accomplished your objective since you're calling me. Right. <laughs> yep. No? He finds he has it, he kills Ralph. And in a really sad way, like he cut, uh, Ralph's finger is cut off with his wedding band, oh. and then Neron like uses his elastic finger to fire his wedding ring through his heart. Oh my God! So Ralph's like, "Gotcha, bye," and he dies. Wait, but isn't he without completing the spell? But isn't he all stretchy? Yeah, but it, like it's the devil. Oh. <laughs> he fired the ring too fast for his body to stretch around. Exactly. So. <sighs> Now, now the wizard having c committed the spell that he really did mean to cast that Felix Faust and Neron were unaware of. Mm -hmm. So Faust is now bound to Neron and they are trapped in this circle in the Tower of Fate forever. Oh. Oh, that's funny. Huh. Forever. Right. Oh, it's well, magic. I mean, yeah. Literally, they are freed in the next event. Oh my God. Like, but for now, let's just enjoy the fact that it's over. Like, you know, Ralph beat the devil. And died. And died. So both Dibneys are dead. Yes, and they're ghosts. 
What? Because yeah. they're in the Tower of Fate? I, it, it has to do, I. it's not really explained, it's, but I think it's because through Ralph's travels, he had to go to Nanda Parbat, which is a realm or place, actually it's a physical place you can go, but it's also kind of magical, like Kunlun in, Mar in the Marvel Universe. Hmm. But uh, Nanda Parbat is where Boston Brand, the dead man, learned his tricks and became oh. the dead man. So I think that Ralph picked up a few dead man tricks from Nanda Parbat <laughs> and imparted them to his wife in the afterlife, so now Sue and Ralph Dibney are ghost detectives that solve mysteries as ghosts. Right. Be so, which no one will write a book for because no one wants to do that. But so, it's a cute little happy ending for the two of them. That's their story. Okay. There's another story that's really fun. Um, Booster Gold realizes that Skeet's on the fritz. You know, he, he, he missed out on that Justice League notification. Well, yeah, right. he said, like, you, Super Muscle. And he wasn't there. Right. So he brings him to uh, Dr. Magnus. Who is who can change? Who can like fix something that's from the f literal future? Doctor Magnus created the Metal Men. Okay. And he's a super scientist who's able to like work with robotics really well. Oh. Yeah, but even like, even robotics that are run on future tech that comes from science that he hasn't like studied yet. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's just it's a machine at the end of the day. Right. Well, Booster, like, I hate to tell you this. This isn't a time telling robot. This is a futuristic uh, motorcycle helmet. <laughs> it's just floating around phone. You know? Yeah, you've been hearing voices. You're schizophrenic. So after Doctor Magnus helps uh, repair Skeets, he's like, I, I, I don't know. This seems fine. Okay, here you go. Like I did my. I, I, I tightened some bolts. Yep, yeah. that'll do it. I, I blew into them and uh, worked yeah. out great. And I went, hmm, <laughs> that looks good. Yeah. And then I rebooted it and now it's good to go. Yeah, good to go. So he goes, Dr. Magnus that is, uh, to visit with his buddy or like colleague, Dr. Tomorrow. Dr. Tomorrow is a supervillain who is also tech-based and created the uh, the Red Tornado. Red Tornado <laughs> get destroyed by Zeta Beams? Yes, he did. Yes, I he did. See. And Dr. Tomorrow is like, where is my Red Tornado? What the hell? Oh. Uh, spoilers, mm. he will buy him on eBay at the end of the book. But, uh... At <laughs> Descartes. He gets his head, and then he's like, okay. Top bitter. Because when he buys it, he finds out that, like, Red Tornado's seen some shit, and that shit is 52. But anyway, what, uh, but wait, for now... What do you mean 52? 52. No, 52, what, 52, 52, the number 52. 52. What is it? 52. 52. Ah! <laughs> so Dr. Tomorrow's in jail, uh, Magnus visits with him, and they just like hang out and chat, because like, uh, Dr. Tomorrow's like, you know, they're, they're, these are old, silly characters that no one wants to talk about. But these guys, Dr. Tomorrow. But these people know it's and like them. Ridiculous. And so they're like, and, and Batman's not gonna show up, so let's deal with this. Yeah. And so Dr. Tomorrow's like, explaining to Will, like, listen, dude, you should watch out, because like, they give me newspapers in here, and super scientists are going missing. Actually, it's not even super scientists. It's mad scientists. <laughs> like Dr. Zvana and stuff. Like, mad scientists are going missing. And so I feel like I'm going to be next. Or you. So you better watch your ass. He's like, like I'm not a mad friend. scientist. I'm just no. a regular scientist. Uh, you're quite mad. Oh, what? yeah, no. Oh, yeah. You and your metal men. Yeah. Uh, who are all destroyed, by the way. Uh, so tomorrow does end up disappearing. And so Magnus gets uh, turned on to that mystery, trying to figure out, like, what's going on with the missing? So now there's a friggin' Magnus story? We yeah, start with Booster Magnus. Gold. What happened to Booster Gold? What's Bo he doing? Okay, so Booster Gold, <laughs> he's going for oh. this one tangent into another right. one. Yes, that's this book. Yeah, ah. that's what he's, uh, yeah. Fifty-two issues. So, uh, Doc, random uh, shit. Booster Gold goes, uh, you know, on this like whole uh, attempt to become a superhero, and he fails. And oh, and he learns that Skeets is functional normally. Yeah, he's got fun. Yeah, but but now Skeets's info is like even more crabbed. It's almost like Magnus screwed up even more, but it's not. It's just that Skeets is like even more messed up. Um, Maybe because Booster Gold keeps changing time and history? <laughs> it's not, it's nothing to do with that. Although Booster Gold does uh, attempt to figure it out by going to Rip Hunter's base. Uh, Rip Hunter, of course, being a master of time. And Booster goes to him and sees that Rip Hunter is missing and that Rip Hunter's got like a blackboard full of fun spoilers or Easter eggs, depending on what you want to imagine, mm. and looks through them and uh, sees that there's a picture of Booster Gold with Skeets and there's arrows pointing at it called, like, he's the traitor, don't trust him. It was like circles and arrows like he's a YouTube thumbnail. <laughs> and oh. Booster's like, oh, what do I do? Oh, crap. So Booster Gold's life completely falls apart. Just picks up the eraser. <laughs> That's better. He's hero, awesome. awesome, big dick. So <laughs> Booster leaves and uh, goes, <laughs> and, and and things get worse for Booster until inevitably there is an incident with a nuclear submarine, uh, and <laughs> he 
tries to go and save it. It's about to go critical, and he takes it and he flies into the sky, and it blows up and he dies. As it turns out, it wasn't going critical. It was just what? a ploy to get the uh, uh, the team or the the uh, Infinity Inc. No, the, the the crew off the ship so that they could defect to America. <laughs> Are you uh, referring to the hunt for Red October? What is it? He's gone. Yeah, he blows up and that's He blows up. up and they find a skeleton and they're like, that's his skeleton, that's done. Wait, I <laughs> thought it went critical <laughs> in space, but I didn't no, think he was sky. near it. No, yeah, no he was. He, he, he had to carry it. He can't throw it into space, he has I'm to sorry. carry it, well, yeah. I'm, I think I missed Blue that. Blue died. Oh, he's yeah. dead. Okay. Saving, a, saving a submarine. He took the submarine into space and it blew uh, up all the stones. Into the skies. Yeah. Sorry, I think I spent too much time trying to figure out what Ben was talking about, and I... So Booster Gold's life is completely in the toilet. It's not going well. You know, Clark Kent's not even writing good good exposés on him. Um, and while Booster Gold is attempting to salvage his terrible career using bad info from Skeets, a new hero emerges, and that hero is Supernova, who, yes, existed in the pre-crisis timeline, but now it's a new version of him, and no one remembers him because no one remembers the pre-crisis continuity. Okay. But Supernova shows up, and Supernova, like, ta-da, I've got a cape. Yeah, and Supernova makes Booster Gold look like a complete asshole. And that's, not on purpose, but like to he's- To be fair. He is one. This does, this does not seem hard to do in this story. Yeah, like- <laughs> Well, in any story. Yeah, yeah, like literally there is a moment where uh, Bo- Booster Gold is one-upped by Supernova, and while Booster Gold is getting up, someone yells, hey Booster, you suck. Like, it should be more like Supernova who yes. just showed up. It's like so, bad football fans. Right, and of course, there's also like a big mystery about like who Supernova is, and did Dio put in like breadcrumbs leading to uh, other red herrings that could be him? People are thinking, oh, uh, Cassie immediately is like, oh, Con- it's Connor. Figured it out, it's Connor. Connor. It's Connor, because I want it to be. <laughs> That's not how that works, Cassie. Nope. Uh. Okay. What are Supernova's powers? Uh, nebulous and varied. He mm. can fly, he has super strength. Uh, what do you oh, want generic powers. <laughs> yes. Uh, talk to fish. Oh, you can do that. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, green light projection. So you're talking to fish. That. What's Aquaman up to during all this? He's in a backup story. It doesn't uh, matter. Okay. But Booster Gold and Supernova, eventually their conflict leads to them fighting, and Supernova's like, you're garbage, Booster Gold. <laughs> like, he, you're the worst Super Superhero. He's, he's, like, he's like, your little robot friend say anything about me? Right, like, you suck. Um, Punching you in the face? Yeah. So and the book is like, yes, Booster Gold, you do suck. Yes, Supernova's right. Get out of here. Hence why you die. <laughs> yeah. And so was that random guy who said you suck. Yeah. So they do. <laughs> that was Clark like, Kent. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Booster, you blow. Uh, so they end up dealing with Clark. like a nuclear submarine, Clark. which is going oh, to go I critical. They they uh, evacuate the crew, and uh, uh, while Supernova and Booster Gold are like arguing, Booster Gold's like, "No, you're not going to hog this for me!" And he pushes Supernova out of the way. And he grabs the the the, the, the sub with his like energy shield. Uh-huh. Like, super uh, Booster Gold's got a force field. Uh, we've seen it before. And he surrounds it and himself and flies up a, like into the sky where uh, both of them explode. Was his not before plan? saying I'm back, baby. <laughs> he does say that, and then he dies. So he wasn't planning to die. He wasn't uh, sacrificing himself. He just thought he had enough time. Yes, and he definitely did. He's not. like, I know what I'm doing. Like, I think I, I honestly I think and it's laden in the narrative. I think that he is like this will like secure my legacy. Like uh, I will die. Right. But th- but at least I won't die an asshole. I'll be a hero. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, but Do, is he? But he's also got the field, so maybe he didn't die. Right. And so uh, no, but I mean, there's a skeleton. It's a say. force field. Well, no, it seems like it would be able to protect him. It's true. So mm. Supernova goes up to try and catch him because maybe this force field like protected him, and he gets Booster Gold, and he uh, his suit is in is there, but his, but there's a skeleton inside of it. <laughs> Is this a yeah, switcheroo? Is. is it a switcheroo? Uh, when they do like <laughs> DNA analysis, they do determine that that was Michael's skeleton. So Booster wow. Gold is dead. But like from in the this future reality. or something? Great or? question. <laughs> and the answer is yes, it is from the future. Yeah. It's all a subterfuge. Uh, <laughs> Is that answered in this book? Yes, or? it's in the book. Of course, it's uh, Switcheroo. Uh, I was no, say, because like, yes. wouldn't Booster Gold fans like hate this if he just dies? Yeah, in both the book of them are really pissed. It? Plus, wouldn't he know that point in history when he died? <laughs> no, because Skeets is bad. He's not giving good information. He's he's full of crap. Skeets Do they explain suck. that? Skeets is sucking up. What? Yeah, big time. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. All right. Oh yeah, yeah. It seems like there's a lot left to talk about. Was it the reality <laughs> warping way? When no, no, mess- that has nothing to do with anything. Oh. Except for the fact that like that's why our intrepid team of uh, travelers are trapped in space. Uh, those guys are trying to go home. Eventually, they end up uh, meeting up with Lobo, who has become a pacifist. 
He has what? joined a uh, universal church uh, worshiping dolphins. And yeah, <laughs> it's all Keith Giffen, haha. And so um, <laughs> they, uh, they end up coming into conflict with a brand new character that they wanted to make Darkseid, but realized that Darkseid was overused, and I think Morrison was still trying to build towards Final Crisis. So we didn't, and they made Lady Styx. And Lady Styx, a fun, evil character who uh, eventually meets her end, but then doesn't because we keep using this character in the future. But uh, they defeat her, and uh, uh, Animal Man dies as a result. Oh, well. uh, Thankfully, Animal Man is in the presence of age, a, uh, aliens that are uh, able to heal from any wound, and uh, Animal Man like levels up to be able to absorb not just powers of animals, but any sentient being. And so he absorbs the powers of oh. the, the, the aliens that can like not die. And so he doesn't die, but he does die first. So the team is like, oh no, he died. And so they leave. And then Animal Man's like, oh man, I died. And then he wakes up and he's not dead. And he's like, now he has their powers. So he uses their powers to just teleport home. And so he goes home. Like, Animal Man's plot is really fun and it's really intense and it's really great because you're like, you keep checking back in with his family and they're like, he's coming home and then he dies and you're like, oh my god, no! <laughs> and then it I turns out- where this was going. Right, and then they don't die and, uh, and yay. Can he absorb Superman's powers? Interesting. Oh. Superman is I think now he could or in, in relation to this he could, but I think it's only because of the, his proximity to those aliens. Um, but no, it's mostly just, it, it, it should be animals, insects, and stuff. Ah. This is a moment where actually he absorbs a spider and crawls up a wall, mm. and then says, if I only had the powers of a spider, I'd be a third string superhero. Oh my god. Why would they do that? <laughs> because, you know, Spider-Man outsells all these characters. And they're just so mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you want to like get really technical, when we go with Booster Gold to Rip Hunter's uh, lair, uh -huh. that time sphere is there. This layer, it looks identical to the layer that we see in Flashpoint Beyond. Hmm. There's also all kinds of stuff. World War III, that happens. A lot of these things happen. A couple of the things on the blackboard do not, so there's still time. Find the last L? Yep. Hmm. I like, I like that down here there's all these numbers and 52 is missing. Yeah. Hmm. Who is Sobek? <laughs> Sobek. Okay, so if you uh, look, get, delve into the Marvel family, uh, they have a talking sentient tiger man named Talking Tawny. And what? Tawny is a talking tiger man that hangs out with the Marvel family. Well, Black Adam's got a new analog Marvel family, so let's get another uh, you know predator. Uh, how about a talking alligator man? Um, so. The, like Killer Croc? Like Killer Croc. No, he, but he's a literal alligator man. Oh. And uh, Osiris is, becomes best friends with Sobek. Uh, ah. And Sobek is like a timid, kind of like meek-ish character who is actually saved from you know, bondage by Osiris. Uh, unfortunately, Osiris uh, inadvertently kills a character, like a super character, not unlike how Superboy Prime did, where he's like, you're making me do this! Mm -hmm. um, he ends up doing it, and he is like racked with guilt, and has a miserable time, and he doesn't believe that he deserves his powers anymore, and he's talking to Sobek about it, and Sobek's like, well, like, why don't you, you know, depower, and we'll, we'll talk about it. So he does, and then Sobek eats him. <laughs> nice. Yeah, wow. Yeah, because Sobek isn't really Sobek. Uh, Sobek is actually a horseman of the four horsemen of Apocalypse with a K. Well, they're gonna oh. end her reign. That's right, they do. I don't know who her is. Great question. <laughs> so, well, they, they get their own miniseries after this, but um, they also get defeated in this. So the four horsemen are actually created by the island of evil mad scientists that Dr. Savannah and Tamaro and Magnus inevitably end up on. You see, that is created by Egg Fu, who has another name, and it's Asian, and it's inappropriate and stupid, and I apologize <laughs> for using it, but unfortunately that's what we that's have in what the book. it's called. Uh, but he, uh, that is, or it, uh, generates this island, uh, or rather, it's Oolong Island, uh, puts all these mad scientists on there to like whip up stuff and just be creative. And it's funny when like Magnus shows up and like one of those like, oh no, my Beetleborg is like out of control. Like it's just, you get on this <laughs> island and you know, like Dr. Tomorrow's there and he's like, hey man, like I'm glad you got the invitation. And he's like, he's got like a chick on his arm. He's like drinking a Mai Tai. 
And it's just like, this is a great like haven for mad scientists. Like finally we are given resources and money and, <laughs> and, 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 and metals and machines. We can make all kinds of crazy shit. Just like, just play. It's like Google, you know, just knock yourself out, have fun. Do they, is there an overarching goal? Or? Well, the goal is that they would create the four horsemen of apocalypse, right. which right. they do, and unleash, and uh, they, uh, and, and one of them pretends to be Sobek, and he's actually famine, which is, what, which is ironic, of course, because he eats. Uh. Oh, that's right. Because uh, uh, he's hungry. Because he's hungry. Now, what makes them the horsemen of apocalypse? They were. Uh, created the, the by idea mad comes, scientists on Earth, right? But you know, of course, you know they they derive from the crime Bible. Ah, which comes from Apocalypse. Yes. I forgot about the and crime that Bible. How, how could I forget about the how crime Bible? did you forget about the crime Bible? I don't know. Bible? I also forgot about. See it. how why this book, why this book does not work on this show? <laughs> uh, but like, are you like no? It's actually like really good. I know it sounds. Freaking crazy! Well, no, because but like, it's all over the place. I know it is. I mean, it's too long. I want to see the big book when Ben's done with it. You will, of course. The death of Isis's brother doesn't go over well. Oh, no, no, I, I could imagine not. So Sobek is, of course, killed. Like he's his his. You know, they do that thing that King Kong does, that dinosaur in the original oh, King yeah. Kong. Uh, but yeah, he's dead. And uh, does he play with him afterwards? Be like, oh, he does not I play with my him. toy. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he's a man. Of course, the rise of the Black Adam family and the proliferation of Kondok and his uh, many hordes uh, triggers the attention of Amanda Waller, who sends the Suicide Squad. Oh, shit. And that is what Osiris, uh, one of the members of the Suicide Squad, is killed by Osiris. And that's what triggers him to get over uh, to, you know, Sobek's clutches. Mm -hmm. uh, but then. Black Adam is like, I gotta deal with these horsemen because they're problems. And then he finds out that they were created by the Oolong Island scientists. So Black Adam is like, I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna kill everyone there. And you're like, oh man, but like Magnus isn't a bad guy. He's, he's he created the middlemen. Like he's he's just kind of there to like figure out what's going on, you know? Yeah, he's caught in the way. Yeah. So is this is uh, one of the other horsemen? Yeah. He's way scarier. I, I know, they're all cool. I, I got a weird question. Mm-hmm. Um, when Osiris dies, does his power revert back to Black Adam? Yes. Okay. Yes, and he, he's like, oh no, I'm more powerful. What the hell's going on? Yeah. Who's this guy? Who do you think he is? <laughs> I, oh no. That's Egg Fu. Yeah, I know. Now that you've said that, who do you think that is? Because he's shaped like an egg. Yeah. And he's yellow, like a yolk. <laughs> but I, I love Black Adam storming Ulan Island because it's like it's just a it's an island full of evil mad scientists. Now, if you imagine like one evil mad scientist versus like Shazam, you know, it's like I've got my my awesome android will destroy you know. But like you've got a room of it's like it's just it's just like a, a, a whole island full of man darks. <laughs> <laughs> they're like yeah, we're all IDDs and and we're all just making making things. So they're like, oh well, Black Adam will surely not get past him. Like my 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 tanks or my giant robots or you know. And so it's just so Black Adam storms this island. Yep, and then the uh, the, the the mad scientists defeat him. Like they they strap a bunch of like power inhibiting collars and stuff on him and beat the crap out of him. And then Oops. they're planning on like just just experimenting on him. What the oh. heck? Because they're evil mad scientists. Like sweet, we got him now. Let's use oh, them. What do we do with them? Yeah, let's let's prove that gods exist <laughs> scientifically. Yeah. Now they're just gonna like take them apart and put them back together again for fun. Okay. Um, oh, so does Steel somehow make himself not? Steel does cure him. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. What happens with that Lex Luthor plot? Like okay. Steel discovers that there is a kill switch on these powers. Mm. And, so Lex uh, Luthor retains control. Yes, yeah. exactly. Of course he does. Yeah, it's a subscription service. If you <laughs> stop paying, you don't get the power <laughs> right. anymore. Uh, it's it's much worse. It's great. Um, <laughs> you imagine that if you're a regular person in a world of superheroes, like someone says, "Oh, we could just like give you a shot, and you get powers now." Yeah, like, yeah. We'll be lining up around the block. And Lex Luthor selectively is like, "Oh, well, you're a person in need, so you get to the, the procedure for free. You're a billionaire. Your son can do it for three billion dollars." Uh -huh. You're like, it's it's that it, it's right. that uh, slipshod. But they all get powers. There's actually a great moment where um, the new Justice League springs into action to save somebody, and then all of the superheroes that have been recently created show up, and they all have like dumbass names. And they all announce themselves. It's just a it's just a page of <laughs> characters you're never gonna see again <laughs> announcing their new names. Yeah, when everyone's super nobody is. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> but uh, Lex Hey just, look, they're <laughs> they're worshiping a dolphin. Yeah. Sweet. Mm hmm Yeah, uh, Lady Sticks want the wants the eye of Ekron, and then ultimately uh, Ekron shows up 
for his eye back, and then Lady Styx is, uh, uh. is, is, is killed. I'm still using that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Le super Le uh, Lex Luthor created the whole program to give himself superpowers. And he finds out, via his scientists, that he is not gen genetically compatible. <laughs> oh. So on New Year's Eve, he gets the he gets the new results back. No, you are not genetic. You will never have superpowers. Oh my! I God. didn't realize that was a thing. That's he just amazing. he turns them all off. Wow. He's like, well, if I can't have it, so, no one no. So, can. like in the middle of like this sequence, like there's a moment where Lex, it's a, it's the most Lex Luthor panel I could think of. Lex Luthor is standing in his power suit, like not the you know his his, his actual like you know Armani suit, and he's standing in front of a window. And you just watch as these costume clowns are falling from the sky like rain, and they all like it's just they all just fall because most of them can fly, right? Or they're crushed to death or whatever. Oh my and, god! Uh, and and so that kind of like turns people onto that. Wow! What happens to uh, Steel's niece? Well, she's part of Infinity Inc., so oh, she isn't is. turned off. Ah! Uh, oh my god! Yikes! So you know he's just like, oh, what happened? Oh no! Uh, what it turns out is, Lex Luthor is genetically compatible. Oh. But one of the scientists on the, on the team is like, I think Lex Luthor is a bastard. <laughs> yeah. So I will fudge the information wow. to hide that from him. So that scientist killed nice. thousands of people. Well, yeah. Technically, Lex Luthor did that. Yeah. yeah. He also dies. Uh, but <laughs> the scientist? Yeah, because Lex finds out. And yeah. so, like, that's that. Uh, uh, so, Lex does go through, this, the, the, through the procedure. And he gets Superman powers. And, uh, yeah. And so that, that becomes a problem. Yeah. Steel goes to face him. And uh, they fight. And then, they f and then uh, Natasha turns the, the kill switch off. And so Lex is depowered. Hmm. And, then, <laughs> and then he's arrested. <laughs> and then they find out. And then one of them is like, wait a minute. That, he, that's not Lex Luthor. He's like a robot. What? So they, 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 they break into his office and they find like a, a secret room where he's just waiting for them to leave. <laughs> and then they get the real Lex Luthor and they arrest him. Wait, the robot had superpowers? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, Lex Luthor and the robot switched. <laughs> ah, okay. In the commotion. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah, he jumped out of his clothes. Well, what was yeah. the point of the robot even being? That's just delayed just funny. things. I see, okay. All right. Yeah, but that's the, that's the super, uh, you know, that's the Lex Luthor plot. Okay, so it's not tied in to... Most of them. It's mostly their plot. Like, okay. It's all about Natasha learning humility and how to work on a team and how like, you don't be, be, be careful what you wish for. And, right. You know, like, throughout you go the, to school. Right, throughout the entire <laughs> damn thing, like she and John are at odds and, uh, and, and John just like bullheadedly like tries to convince her. And it's frustrating because like Natasha learns that she was a dumb teenager, but <laughs> John doesn't learn that he was an asshole about it. Right. So like, you know, eh. Yeah, that's too bad. But yeah. Well, they all, but, but, oh, and, and all of Infinity Inc. Uh, is depowered inevitably. Right. You know, everyone who got right. powers uh, loses their powers. Loses it, and I guess never gets it again. That's like, right. Like we turn that off. Yeah. Forever. That's right. W with question, the point is, uh, Vic ultimately dies. Um, of cancer? Yeah. Hmm? Of cancer. Yes. Of cancer. And uh, it's sad because, like, Renee and he have a really combative relationship because she's like, he believes that there's something in her and she does not. And you know, she's mm. like, I am trash and I don't, I don't even want to live anymore. And he's like, not only are you not trash and you should live, <laughs> but you should be the question. She's like, F no. And uh, what does the question do? Well, I mean, not much because he doesn't get books What's very often. It's a way often, to get information. But, you know, it's not a declarative sentence, but it is something of an inquiry. So how do you become the new one of those? It's just being, <laughs> just become a private eye? I mean. So you like teach her how to nobody like Nobody wants to be the question. The question like, is obviously also the proto Rorschach. So it's like, yeah. the, the question is not a glamorous, fun job. No. Uh, also the question is like the special spray that he puts on that like makes the, 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 the blank face mask. Okay. But, oh, so uh, he has a face. Yeah, he does, yeah. 
Okay. He's a guy. No, he just wears that. Like I, it's, it's not real. I no, wasn't sure. Yeah, no, he's a guy. Uh, does but, she have to accept his libertarian ideology? In no, order to she doesn't. <laughs> she surprisingly, it's good actually for her. Uh, but yeah, um, she, yeah. The question is, it, it's very much relegated to Vic, and th then like when we get Renee, it's like a very different kind of question. Okay. But uh, ultimately, it's a lot of like monsters. Yeah, well, they're dealing with inner gang and uh, the the, and, uh, the horsemen like monsters, and the monsters. It's like a griffin and a minotaur. I know. Yeah, it's, it's pretty sweet. I'm okay with that. So, is there going to be a big fight? All right. No. Yeah, there is. Oh. There is. Oh, oh. Uh, booster story. All right. Because right. Is, that, is it the last one? It's kind of the last one. Yeah. I mean, so Renee. I'm sure we missed something. Dealing with Renee. Um, oh, there's a lot we missed. She tries to bring Vic to Nanda Parbat because when you're there, you can't die, but he dies in the way. It's very sad, tragic, mm. and she's like super sad about it. Ultimately, she does uh, take oh, on. Oh wow! I actually opened the spot. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Ultimately, she does take up the the mantle of the question just in time to team up with Nightwing to save Kathy. Uh, Batman goes on his own adventure because we can't not do Batman. Oh, uh, so he does show up. He does show up. It's really frustrating <laughs> because like he had one rule book. I know, and I and I'm not even going to dignify it. it. Doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, so. technically, Clark showed up the entire time. Yeah, well, yeah. But oh, there's a great moment actually where Clark is gonna get fired by Perry because he doesn't have any Superman to write about and he can't be at the scene of the crime as quickly anymore. So he's a crappy reporter. What happened to you? You, you yeah, used to be on top, on top of all the biggest stories. You were stories. a Pulitzer Prize winning reporter and now it's like you don't have any newspaper reporting experience like at all. It's like you're just a regular guy. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. why don't you reach out to any of your sources where you get all your stories right. from? And, well, you like, know. at least figure out, like, get an interview. <laughs> you're doing sources, like, right? you, you, like, I would have expected you to be able to interview, like, this, like uh, Supernova by now. And so, because Supernova, of course, becomes the new hero of Metropolis right. with the death of Booster Gold. So, Super, so Clark's like, you're right. And then jumps out the window. And I just can't take life anymore. <laughs> right, like he pulls a Lois. And Does so it work? Supernova swoops in and saves him. He's like, care for an interview? Oh my God. He's like, no. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, no, I'm not gonna I got other jumpers you. to save. Yeah. No, by the way, uh, uh, the other heroes, like Starfire and uh, Adam Strange, they end up kind of caught by Mogo. It's a great moment. Because you know they're, they're just going through so much shit. And then they land Mogo? on a planet, Mogo, the planet that is a Green Lantern. Uh, we Got talk it. about Mogo a lot, but like, yeah, we should, we should. The, uh, watch out for Xenomorphs because they're also name. on Mogo. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, right, yeah, no. Uh, but once they're like on Mogo, you're like, oh, thank God, because <laughs> Mogo A isn't gonna die and B is gonna bring them home. Like, good, okay, that wraps that up. Thank you. <laughs> but. Uh, and, and they'll, they'll be safe there because it's a whole planet with like nobody on it. Right. Except for those Xenomorphs. <laughs> if you read Gridlander versus Aliens. Where are any flashes? It's weird that none of them are in it. It's weird that they don't address a key member of the Justice League. I know, I, I don't get it. Who logically should be helping out as much as he can. I completely agree. I was saving the legions of people who these clowns could not save. Exactly. You didn't see it. I was just but running around me. for a year. Yeah. Booster Gold story right. is that he ends up hooking up with Rip, Rip Hunter. And Rip Hunter is like, yeah, no, you're not the traitor, you dumbass. Skeets is the traitor. Oh, uh, you were just in the I was picture pointing with at Skeets. Skeets. So I circled both of you, because I was, <laughs> I I was together, in a hurry. Right? So. Skeets is the traitor? Yes. How can, you'll, not, you'll see. It's not really a traitor. No, he is. Oh, so okay. Skeets is the well, traitor. He's a robot. So Booster Gold needs to suss out why that happened, so he faked his own death. Rip grabs his skeleton from the future when he did die at some indeterminate right, period, which we're not gonna get die, into. Yeah. He'll die eventually, does. he'll leave a skeleton. So <laughs> put that in there, so they got a skeleton they can check, that Skeets can look over and be like, yeah, so that's Rip him. Rip can just travel through Sweet, time. Sweet, I killed him. Yeah, Rip okay. can, oh, he does, indiscriminately. Oh, okay. uh, but he also does it by himself, so he doesn't like, you know, implicate anybody else. But he does do it later with, te with people. He's, he's time lawyers and stuff. Okay. But uh, yeah, so Booster is like, all right, how do I like monitor what's going on without getting caught? I'll be Supernova. What? So Booster Gold is Supernova the whole time. See Superman, I can do it. But oh, wow. his his face is obscured, so it's like he never gets the credit. You know, he gives all the superheroics to this character who doesn't exist. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to That's ask clever. If it was him. Right? Right. Is because it just another... time travel shenanigans? Of course. Yeah. Is yeah. No, you know, just tell the story. No, go ahead. But is 
Skeets infected by like Brainiac or something. No. Okay, cool. Yeah. No, no. In fact, it's, been dead. it's not. It's really fun. Is I it think like it's a crime Bible. It's not the crime Bible. <laughs> forgot about the crime Bible. It's over. How could we forget about the crime Bible now? Wait, the crime Bible's just done now. You can just keep talking to us about the Wait, crime I, Bible. I, I explain the crime Bible at some indeterminate point. In I haven't episode. even seen the crime Bible. Well, yeah. What does it there. look like? Does it look like a regular Bible? It's like a just, book, all yeah, right. But, instead of a T, it's got a C on it. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just a book. It's red. I don't know. There it is, I guess. Yeah, it's gonna upside uh, down. Now. No, that's the fucking. That's the resurrection, that's the resurrection Bible. book. Oh, 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 the sorry. resurrection book is the crime Bible? They're one of the same? <laughs> no! <laughs> wow, that's, that's genius. I hate that. Diabolical genius. Last episode Didn't of Back Issues. Coming. What? <laughs> so. Would you like this? Yes, please. Give take, me this. Take your tome. Your, take your own crime Bible. This, yeah. <laughs> Book is a crime Bible. <laughs> oh yeah, Black Adam. I forgot Black about Black Adam. That. I thought oh, we were done with Black no, Adam. No, Black Adam. He had the shortest story. No, oh, that's right. He's no, because okay, so Black they still have him. Right? Yeah, the the the, the, the Oolong Island oh, players. Right. They have and their Black crime Adam. Bible. They know. So the Oolong <laughs> Island players, they have Black Adam. Adam Smasher, under the directive of Amanda Waller, breaks with protocol and goes and rescues Black Adam. Black Adam is freed. He freaks out. He goes to kill like everybody because he's mad. <laughs> no, that didn't work the first time. No, it didn't. Yeah, but um, now he's gonna <gasps> dodge. Yeah, their that was called World War Three. That was on the on the chalkboard. Oh. Yes, it was. That's right. That's oh, right. we already paid it off. All right. Yeah. Yeah. In Black Adam's fight with the four horsemen or three horsemen. Yeah, he retook out one of them horsemen. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Isis assists with the fight, and Pestilence kills her. Oh. Oh. Damn. So, she dies. This whole family thing does not work out. It does not work out. Oh. But, like, it's actually cool, because, like, the, the family, like, Black Adam discovers Wait, the family. isn't her power to heal? Yeah, that's why Pestilence kills her, because Pestilence is the thing that's, like, counteracting her ability. So there's a great moment where, like, she dies, and of course she's been like his conscience the entire book. Mm. And then it, deter it, it just, you know, it's revealed that like, men created these things to kill us. And so as she's dying, she's like, just promise me one thing, avenge us. Huh. And he's like, oh. <laughs> oh, I can do that. So she dies, he gets her powers, and, he's, and he just goes on a freaking rampage. Hey, when he gets his powers back, shouldn't he also be infected with the pestilence? No, it's not like that ha That transfer. It's just the powers. Just her body. Just her body. And her powers, which are useless, apparently. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he goes to attack the uh, Oolong Island people, then they catch him, then Adam Smasher frees him, and then he just goes on like a world tour of ass kicking. Where he just starts attacking everybody. Shazam finally gets his head out of his ass and just I said and avenge me, not just go like <laughs> hog wild. That's what I mean. Like burn this whole damn place to the ground. So I, I think that's a loose interpretation of what she said. Well, <laughs> no, I am Black Adam, so that's that's fair. So everybody who can be assembled does, whoa, and then whoa, whoa, they whoa, don't use that word. No, oh, I know. That's <laughs> lowercase a. Oh, okay. And so they go and fight Black Adam, and so. Uh, no, oh, there is a big fight. Yeah, yeah that's this is the big fight. That's the big fight. So Black Adam is just what? He's just trying to take over the world now. He's just taking it out on everybody. Everybody's here except for those who can't. But like the Green Lanterns, the JSA, people who would be the Justice League but aren't, and it just becomes like a big ridiculous slap fight. And it's just just you know, with why just with everybody with just um, Black, Black Adam. Adam. That's yeah, how like, powerful. Why do you need that many people? Because to fight? Jeff Johns is also writing this book. <laughs> to but is Shazam helping them? Yeah. So, is it Shazam as strong as Black Adam by himself? <laughs> he yeah, but he's also crazy. Fight him? Yeah. Uh, yes. But also, I want to make Black Adam a big hitter in the DC universe. Big screaming oh, deal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so. So now he's super powerful because he's mad. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The so, matter he gets, he's like the Hulk. Right. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna not hold back ever. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was holding back before. Exactly. So oh, yeah, Martian Manhunter's there. Does anything happen with Martian Manhunter? Do we explain yeah. where he was this whole time? Yeah, he's, he's like, hey everybody, do you remember me, the Martian Manhunter? Yeah, I was like leader of the Justice League for like most of the okay. time. Okay, so in the crappy Justice League, they're like, where's John, where's John Jones? We gotta get him, because it's not the Justice League without Martian Manhunter. Mm -hmm. That's that reference. Martian Manhunter is pretending to be key members of the uh, US government to dissolve Checkmate, because Checkmate was a big oh. problem during Identity Crisis and Infinite Crisis, and screw, because Checkmate was a big problem in, in Infinite Crisis, so screw that. Yeah, but Max Lord is dead. They killed the king. Yeah, they did, but yeah, Checkmate but was still gotta, a thing. Yeah. So he helps to dissolve Checkmate. Then Black Adam starts screwing around, and they're like, why did you dissolve Checkmate? We need Checkmate. <laughs> Let's make Checkmate a UN organization and give them even more power. So Sean's like, oh my god! What are you doing? Dissolve a Checkmate? We need that. Yeah, yeah. 
let's make it even more powerful. Literally, somebody's like, let's make it a UN thing and make it even more powerful. So they so, do, and then so John's does nothing. Let's make a three-dimensional checkmate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so John fails. So, so why'd you waste an entire year doing that thing? Nobody yeah, asked you to do that. That happens in like week three. So oh, okay. uh, ultimately. Uh, Zatanna forces everybody to work together, and uh, she's like, "Hi, I haven't been in this book, but um, yep. So they, magic, but they conjure like uh, a, a big lightning bolt that Shazam can wield. That is, you know, like the Shazam bolt, uh-huh. mm-hmm. and uh, Shazam like fires it at Black Adam and transforms him back into, you know, his his human form. And through the work, because it's like Shazam is kind of like the new wizard, so he can do that. And so Shazam makes. Black Adam's new phrase a different word. So Black Adam can't transform until he guesses it. Oh. So Black Adam like is lost in the fight and is wandering the world trying to guess what the word is. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious? Probably. So, there so you go. there's probably a lot of Black Adam fans who are like, oh man, they did Black Adam dirty. No, I think they, they were... I think that there weren't any, and this book made a few. Mm. I think the people didn't really love Black Adam until this book. So then they have like another like memorial service. And they all pat each other on the back That's and after, say we did a great job. After World War III, which has its own tie-in series, which I'm not even gonna get into. Oh my god. Uh, but we see that like, you know, we got well, some- I'm sorry, why is it called World War III? Because the whole world is involved with Black Adam fighting everybody. So they have a big meeting uh, at the memorial place for Connor and Superman, where they kind of go like, whoo, that was a crazy year on week 51. Mm. It's almost a year. Right. Uh, but uh, Donna Troy becomes Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman becomes a secret agent. Cassie stays Wonder Girl. And... Uh, so wait, that's not Wonder Woman. No, that's, that's Donna that's Troy. Right. Okay. This all just happens at the end? Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it happened, you know, and... Uh, so that's like something where someone decided that's where she was going to end up, and uh, they just didn't put it in any of the prior. Well, no, there's books, a Donna so Troy just... in the backups of other stories. They t- they give you Donna Troy's ascension to Wonder Woman, oh, which okay. nobody likes or cares about. I see. Um, also, wow. Clark and Bruce go to the big memorial, you uh-huh. know, and they're like, "Whoo!" Bruce is like, "I think I'm done finding myself in the desert. I think I'm ready to beat Batman again." It's really dumb. I hate it so much. I'm not again. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it because Bruce goes through the, like. Bruce leaving and going like, let's do all the crap I did to become Batman with my two surviving partners, mm-hmm. right? With Dick and Tim. Yeah, let's like really elevate their skills. Yes, and become a team. Cause like I learned how to become Batman, solo act mm-hmm. through this. But now relearning all this stuff with them, it'll be like, we'll, we're even better as a team. Right. Than ever before. And everyone kind of hates me, so maybe you two can be like the face of the organization. I'll just of the Batman like stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like Tim kind of goes like, I think that we did that so that you'd be Batman, Dick, and I'd be Robin, and he'd go away. Mm. But then Batman's like, I can't trust anybody. Why? And instead of like going to therapy, he goes through like a vision quest. Fart. <laughs> I liked it better when he was just going when he was like on a on a team building exercise with his sons. Right. Of which there were two, and one was in the ground, and the other one didn't exist. Meh. Uh, Sour grapes. Remember trying to do that stuff as a family? <laughs> it's like a road trip. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be ups and downs. Right. You're going to be like, we're going to go on this great yeah, thing. But they did the, the they went it through the road trip. It was great. And then he came be. back and was like, no, I'm not done yet. Yeah, but actually, no. But actually, I'm going to go on a solo adventure where I have to fucking figure myself out. I'm like, no! <laughs> also, Tim changes his outfit from the red and green to the red and black because those were Superboy Connor's colors. So he's like, I changed my costume to look more like Superboy, because he's great. It's, I like that look. Okay. I like it fine. Moving on. This is week 51. Yeah. Yeah. So in week 52. But, okay, because it seems like we wrapped it yeah, up. Yeah, we still haven't figured out the traitor yeah. thing yet. So in week 52. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, in week 52, we reveal that Skeets is an incubation chamber for the mis- the Captain Marvel villain, Mr. Mind, that caterpillar character who can read minds that takes 52 weeks to gestate, whereupon he emerges from the cocoon of Skeets to become the Venusian monster moth creature that he always was destined to be. What? Skeets was co-opted by Mr. Mind, the caterpillar villain that was used that used to be a captive slash partner of Dr. Savannah, 
that nobody ever did anything <laughs> with because he is a Venusian caterpillar. Uh-huh. And it's like, well, what do caterpillars do? They turn into stuff. And so, they and, do do and this that. Was, this, was, this was foretold because uh, the question, as he's dying, Vic Sage, reveals to, Mon to Montoya in an unrelated story <laughs> that uh, they have effects on people like wings of a butterfly. You know. Yeah, the butterfly, butterfly flaps its wings uh -huh. and it changes something. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, we're, we're, and that was actually foreshadowing that we were going to get like a chrysalis of some form for this winged beast. Because he said the word butterfly. Right? And uh, so, yeah, that happens. And so... What, does his species normally put themselves We've in never seen, this robots is, this is, we're from making the future the in order to incubate? Or no, he does he did, just kind of wing it? He did that <laughs> also to have... He did there. Right? <laughs> but he also, no, he used Skeets also because Skeets had like information about the future. Oh, so he's like, well, I'm in there for 52 weeks. I'll be absorbing his information from the future. Yeah. But also like altering it yeah. or fucking with it. Yeah, just to screw over Booster. I but see. also, um, in the Infinite Crisis, Alexander Luther, using the uh, rod tower thing that also was built out of the Anti-Monitor's armor, restarted the multiverse. But then it was destroyed and the multiverse was collapsed again. But the energy of the multiverse that was now in the prime Earth that existed in its own universe without any multiverse anymore, the energy had someplace to go. And it needed to go someplace. And Mr. Mind, as the new monster moth, wants to consume that energy. And so, in his efforts to do so, he ends up creating 52 identical Earths to the Earth that we exist in in the DC universe right now. So the 52 that we've been teasing the whole time is the 52 Earths that Grant Morrison makes a map out of later. And, and when I say really? later, I mean at the end of this. So that was what the 52 is, and Dan DiDio put in a code that literally said, before the book was over, the secret of 52 is the multiverse is still around. Huh. So that's the idea, is that like there are 52 identical Earths to this one, where the same crap is happening, Except for, I guess, the Mr. Mind stuff, because that's happening right now, and we don't see, like, 52 Mr. Minds. <laughs> so don't worry about that. <laughs> right. Well, because then there would be 52 times 52 times uh -huh. 52. Yeah, There'd be, be a lot. So right. Rip Hunter sees that Mr. Mind has now become the moth, and he's like, oh, crap, that wasn't supposed to happen right now. So then he grabs Booster, and they get into their time machine, and they go back to where it all started, which is week one. Uh-huh. So Rip Hunter and Booster Gold go to the multiverse where they see the identical Earths all coexisting, right? Uh-huh. Which is the new multiverse. And as the Mr. Mind moth creature chases them through time, <laughs> uh -huh. it is drawing energy from these uh, from these Earths and from these par from these characters because Supernova shows back up because they needed a descendant of Booster Gold, and so they grab this other loser who's like a distant cousin of Booster Gold, and they bring him in, and then they make him the new supernova. Whatever. Mr. Mind, mucking around with the energies of these Earths, end up causing untold changes to each of these Earths. But the Earth started as like a baseline of this is... Yeah, it's this template. It's this template. Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, all this crap. But Mr. Mind eating it and stuff makes one of this Earth look like Wildstorm and Wildcats and stuff. And <laughs> him eating it another way makes them all the crime syndicate world. And him trying to eat it another way makes it into like, you know, the Nazi planet and all the other crap. Well, whatever, whatever Grant Morrison wants them to do. And so we see the multiverse of DC being created as a result of Mr. Mind eating their energies in a distinct or different way. Huh. That and is not where I thought <laughs> That came from. That's why it's like the 52nd issue is like, huh. I gotta tell you, I did not see that happen. <laughs> well, that doesn't have anything to do with most of the rest of the story. No, nope. but okay. I love them being like, all right, we're gonna build out the new universe. Like, we're right. gonna build out the new multiverse. And the new multiverse is going yeah, to. You thought it was gone, it ain't. Yeah, it's not. And we're gonna tell new stories in those universes, probably. Right. But it doesn't exist until this Mr. Moment. Mind starts eating them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As he chases them through time. Is this the yes. Kingdom Kung universe? Yeah. Okay. Are they trying to get back to the beginning of it so they can stop Mr. Mind from emerging? Yes. 
But Mr. Mind has already gone through the multiverse, so he's already created the multi. He's already made these Earths. It's too late. So if they stop Mr. Mind, they will stop him from eating everybody, but not from the damage he's already caused to the multiverse. Also, Skeets is like irreparably damaged as a result of the whole, uh, you know, Mr. Mind being inside of him thing. Right. Uh, okay. Why so, did he have to be in there? Because well, be it's somewhere. warm, Tiffany. It's a computer. It's the perfect place to gestate. But if yeah. he's a caterpillar, shouldn't he be making his own cocoon? Because he's not that kind of caterpillar. Yeah, it's a Venusian caterpillar, Tiffany. Also, because like <laughs> he needs a robot from the future to gestate oh, inside right. of. Oh right! How silly of me. Well, and then we wouldn't have had like a mystery of like what's going on with Skeets and a reveal <laughs> that Skeets had Mr. Mind inside. Didn't they like? Wait, didn't didn't Magnus Doc, look at him? He, like, didn't he open him up? I guess. And go like, there's a little uh, caterpillar. There's I guess there's a caterpillar like, in there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so hide behind the circuit too. Looked, he just, he just moved. Oh, so he wasn't yeah. there anymore. Okay. No, you know what? That's the reveal is that Mr. Mind, or no, uh, no, that's that's that, that, that's what you guys were keying into the whole time. Is like, Magnus is like, I don't know what I'm fucking looking at. <laughs> no, so I just went like, the fantastic thing would be. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> if Magnus put Mr. Mind no. in there. Oh. Magnus, no, he has nothing to do with Mr. Mind. No, he's just a shitty scientist. <laughs> no, he's oh. a good scientist. He can make metal men. He's not a good repairman. We could definitely write a story about how Magnus Encountered Mr. Mind and right. teamed up with him to put him Magnus inside. Magnus wouldn't of do that. Head. He's a good guy. Yeah. Well, maybe well, he thought Mr. Mind was a good guy. Maybe Mr. Mind kidnapped his family. Oh, wow. That's what they usually I'll do. Give you, I'll his give you back your family if you put me in yeah, this exactly. weird right. future egg. He's like, I took your metal yeah. men from you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. actually, they did. They already did that in the story. Like they took his metal men. Like they took his designs, but they can't make his fun, goofy, silly metal men. They can only make like serious as a heart attack metal men, oh. which is not as fun. And they, they're also you can kill them, not feel bad about it. So they go back to when Mr. Mind first transformed, before he was huge, mm-hmm. and then grab Skeets and close him in to Skeets. Skeets also volunteers for this plan because Skeets is like, you know, freed of Mr. Mind's control. Mm-hmm. So he's like, all right, I'm gonna I'm willing to make the big sacrifice. Uh-oh. So they enclose like the the young transform but still small enough to fit in Skeets, Mr. Mind moth, inside Skeets, and then they throw him into the time stream in a kind of cute moment where like uh, Booster's uh, cousin is a loser and a failed athlete. So Booster and he have like a catch where they throw the ball to each other. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Does he really say that? He says 38, 44, 52. (laughs) And then throws it to him. And uh, so Supernova That is admittedly a very cool gorgeous couple of pages. Yeah, where Supernova chases the Skeet's egg that Mr. Mind is inside of through all of 52 again, leading to Mr. Mind being a caterpillar again, where he will be left in the past to become himself, like the caterpillar that he was, when Mr. Mind was first discovered by Dr. Savannah. Because Dr. Savannah is the one who like discovers uh, Mr. Mind and names him such in his origins Mm -hmm. Uh, because of the like chronal fuckery that these guys achieved using Supernova and Skeets's like you know egg uh, it 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 traps Mr. Mind of the present in a loop in a loop Mm. so he has to relive his captivity forever interesting okay okay so, and it explains and, where he came from. But yes. like, didn't, didn't the future or whatever? So Rip knew this was going to happen. He suspected it would happen. So why didn't he just take Skeets? Mm. I mean, I know why because they wanted to do do this the, whole thing. Yeah, they wanted yeah. to do this whole thing. But like, character-wise, he wouldn't he just be like, let me see Skeets for a second. Yeah. Crap. Okay, there is definitely a caterpillar <laughs> in here. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> We need to kill this thing. Right. Before he gets wings and it gets real bad. Yeah. Well, this is the problem with all time travel stories. You can always do that. Yeah. 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 You just have to pretend that they didn't think of it or something something would stop. I mean, he's like a time lord. (laughs) Yes. And he's like, yeah, but that was one of those nexuses where it was meant to happen. It was always going to happen. I can't do anything about it. Yes. (laughs) Because Rip Hunter also is like, there's a whole Booster Gold series that's launched out of this. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. When, in which like Booster Gold's like, I need to join the Justice League. Right, I, he, I'm a superhero again. I'm real. But he has right. no, and he has no Skeets. Y- no, he does because they find that they made a backup of Skeets before all of this. So they they load up the old. So Skeets. we don't even change that. 
But wouldn't he be a shittier Skeets? <laughs> no, he's just... Wait, they made a backup? Doesn't mean that anyone can have access to the information that Booster Gold has? Yeah, but it's like, it, 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 it's a, it's an inner circle. Yeah, it's hard to do. Oh, yeah, but yeah. Skeets is like sentient, so like, you'll only interact with Booster Gold. Yeah, that's true. Well, he's got security <laughs> protocols built in. I thought they were doing a thing where it's like, we gotta get rid of Skeets because it makes Booster Gold too powerful, but no. Right, no, he's gonna... No, no. no. We did get rid of it, but we brought it right back. Exactly. We also set up that. Uh, but is, isn't he made from like current materials? Couldn't he be more easily destroyed as opposed to being. I sure. I mean, that, 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 okay, editor Tiffany. Like, that, that is like an idea <laughs> that allows him to be more vulnerable, but like, that's not what they do. Oh, okay. They still have the shell of him. You know, they, yeah. they, just, they just. Oh, they upload rip the out his insides and, or rip out his programming and put. I hope they're like, let's give the Dibneys a happy ending. We'll have them both be dead, and now they're ghosts. Yeah. That's better well, than they're being together, alive. at least. Yeah. Well, they're they both can be dead, together right? forever. Jon's knows he's going to bring them back. Okay. Because uh, Blackest Night is coming. Oh. Right. Now, they will be zombies and will kill people. Sure. But then Brightest Day will be. Which I mean, right. I guess that is worse than being ghosts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's just their bodies. Listen, they'll be happy to be ghosts. Yeah, they'll be when? glad to be ghosts once they see what they do in zombies. <laughs> But yeah, so 52 is like a menagerie of stories that all kind of like intersect and parallel and reference each other. And there's a lot there. There's a lot there. There is a lot. There. There is a lot. You know? This is a lot. It's a lot. It's why we've been avoiding it for so many years. But you know what? We've done bigger. We've done. No. We've never done a book this long. Mm, no. no. But no. we've done books this complicated before. Oh, no. Wave Rider's in <laughs> no this. No words there. Uh, well, he, didn't he just happen, so... No, Wave Rider is no, attacked he's... by Skeets. Oh. No, Skeets is like, I gotta hide or, 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 or get rid of anybody who could screw with time. So Skeets, with a caterpillar inside of him, is more powerful than Wave Rider. Well... I think it's that... Um, at this point, Wave Rider has outlived his popularity or usefulness. Yeah, like let's so we can get rid of nerf him. him. Is he just yeah. at home crying? Usually, yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> come on, I'm Wave Rider. I can do this. I think he knows he's gonna die because uh, he's a time. Oh, because he's yeah. Uh, okay, he's yeah, scared. He's at a clock shop. Yeah. he doesn't want to miss the time. Uh, no, I'd be sad if I were him because if you recall, his origins are that he hates his family. But it's a it's a book that like sets up a number that will never not be associated with DC. Yeah, yeah. they and, claimed it. And I love that like they they were like no, it means two things. It's the amount of num the amount of weeks in a year and it's the amount of universes that we're willing to put into the multiverse. Right. It's a it's a lot. It's a big number that we can put a lot of stuff in, but it is still finite. Yes. Yeah. It's still manageable. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. As opposed to Marvel with their Earth 616. Yes. Jesus. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, DC had an infinite multiverse as well. Mm. And does now. Yeah, it does now. But, like, but for who a while, cares? And, yeah. It was more restrained. Exactly. But, so they don't have the map anymore? or they Okay, so there is a map and they love to reference it. But mm-hmm. now, after Dark Crisis, there is an expanding multiverse. Right, okay. So the map's always changing. Yes. Okay. Well, the, the map is a map of what was. There will probably never be another map. Unless we collapse the multiverse again. Right, right. So unless the map is like a, a reference point to a, a fixed part of Marvel or DC history. Yes. That is no longer relevant. It's the starting point and we're, we're diverging from there. Yes. Sort of. That's right. Like those 52 universes do exist, but there's also more. And then there's 152. You know, uh, or a thousand. Right. Or a million. Right. And we'll also never tell a, them any there's stories. a dark underside of it as well. Oh yeah, don't forget the dark multiverse. Right. Yeah, there's more than 52 of those. Theoretically. Obviously, like many fan favorite, kind of like ambitious projects from DC, particularly from like 2006 to 2012, th- it generated a host of vocal yet uh, not as numerous fans that would like to see more things like it or would, would like to see some measure of elevation for characters that were given a spotlight as a result of things like this. You know, like, and it's like, it's tough for DC to honor that because it's like, well, it's, you know, it's, it's an ever-changing industry and there's, you know, more opportunity than ever to fail or lose money and we need to like build up something and 
So it's it's tough to it's a tough order to do this again, mm. and it's and it, and it sucks that like they did it so quickly after this in yeah. something that failed so colossally, yeah. and it it, it you know, I think that now that most of the people involved are gone, huh. uh, yet the writers and creators remain, we could get another fifty two. Mm. That could be a really fun mystery or seven all at once that do have a lasting ramification on the whole of the universe that we could still build to and surprise people with? I don't think that they will. Uh Maybe scale it back. Maybe do a 26. I'd take a 26. You know, 52 is a tall order and it's tough to pull off. Mark Wade, continuity junkie. Grant Morrison. (laughs) At all. But, Uh, But also loves artifacts. Yes. Uh, Greg Rucka, grounded, gritty crime novelist. <laughs> you know, you've got like all these different power players. Jeff Johns, also continuity junkie, also very specified continuity junkie. Mm-hmm. You know, like Mark Wade <laughs> remembers very it all. Certain parts yeah. of continuity. Right. Yeah. Mark Wade remembers it all and is happy to show you the Metal Man. Loves Metamorpho. Jeff Johns is like Hal Jordan. Barry well, Allen. Does Hal Jordan Hunter. show up in here? Yeah, he's in there. Oh, okay. It's not important. You know, oh, Hal, Hal's will in be. Here. Right. Remember he was there at the, like, uh, during the uh, creepy straw doll? Yeah, he, un- right. he got roped into the whole right. cult of Connor. Yeah, yeah. It was okay. kind of hard to remember so that after we saw the, the, the straw, the straw thing. Yeah, the straw it did it, push it, everything out. Yeah. Horrific. All right. And don't forget Keith Giffen. Yes, and Keith Giffen also manages to do, like, a Herculean task of drawing the whole damn book. Even if he didn't, you know, draw the Literally whole damn draw book. the whole damn book. He, he, he plotted out he the whole damn book. He plotted it out and, and laid it out for everybody. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking this video. Thanks for watching. And thank you, everybody here on this couch, for being on at least 400 and something episodes of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th- now there's an interesting challenge. Identify how many episodes each of us is in. I can tell you that I'm not even on 500 episodes. No, you're not. No, no you're not. It's so heavy. <laughs> it's the crime bible. <laughs> Behold. I wish DC would publish the crime. Do with the crime, crime. What do you mean? Do we see, do we, does it come back? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, it, it, okay. it, it, pre, it predates this. Oh, it was before this. Yeah, no, the crime okay. bible oh, keeps coming up. Oh, I thought they invented it for this. I was like, that's random, the I, crime bible. I know. Who invented the crime bible? I don't know. I okay. freaking love how much we're obsessed with the crime bible. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they, oh, they even issue. got a Christmas because it's around yeah, the holidays. It's yeah, 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 yeah. And the story covers a week or a year of time. Like, they actually... Yes. This is like, Honor, like this is like what happens when Ben says a joke sometimes. <laughs> and we're just like, <laughs> I laugh, and the rest of you are all stupefied. <laughs> yeah. Is that Jay Garrick? Yeah. What's he doing? Oh, there's a flash. Being on the JSA. Hmm. We found one. Found the flash. Do they do? This guy dies. <laughs> What? The guy with the giant scythe? Yeah, the guy oh, who... Are they a Suicide Squad? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I mean... You gotta kill one. Are they some kind of Suicide Squad? Uh, do they do a good number of issues where people are just, like, saving people and stuff? Just, like, would be a lot easier if Superman was around, but no. I'm just gonna deal... Oh. There's too much mystery. Right. Whoa. It's like, we Whoa. have to push this mystery forward. Whoa. That, that guy dies a lot. <laughs> yeah, Holy dies, fucking like, shit. With extreme prejudice, yeah. Yikes. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> My God.